Yeah, make some noise! It's so good to see you, lovely Dynasty Typewriter Theater in downtown Los Angeles. How do you feel tonight? You look so much better than that. Please welcome to the stage, Spencer Crittenden! Yeah! He brought that backpack for you. He got a backpack full of emotion for you. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully laugh, laughter's not an emotion. Not when you hyphenated like that. Damn. <laughs> burr, 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 burr. Are you all ready for your headliner here at Shucklefuck? Yeah. Please welcome to the stage the mayor of Harmontown. He gets down, Dan Harmon. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, we have so much to do. So much to do. I just, I did want to. I, I was listening to the Pete Holmes episode from last week, and I, I there were so many things. I was like, well, first of all, Dan, you drink too much and you interrupt too much. You should let like like fun people that have lots to say talk. Or, like I hate listening to myself interrupt people. But uh, but Pete 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 Holmes said so many. There were so many interesting like little touch points, like like uh, little things he said, like uh, gems. Hate is a lack of imagination. I mean, it, uh, it has, has stuck with me for for a week. There were a couple other ones. Now I'm too drunk to remember. But uh, really fun episode. So glad Pete came out. Let, let's all hope he has something to plug again so he comes by. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 I have a new friend for you guys to meet that I'm 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 I'm, I'm deeply excited about, um, uh, which could be bad or good. I don't know. But I, I got like, here's the thing. Like this is the last episode before uh, 2019, I believe. What? Yeah. No, wait, no. Yeah. Really? Because next Monday will be. Uh, fuck you. I'm in Tahiti. I'm a cliche. <laughs> I'm doing you got a pot. You should podcast from there. <sighs> yeah, I know. I, I, I will Minecraft from there, and maybe I'll. <laughs> I'll try to see if a Twitch signal can go through the swordfish or whatever the, you, they have for internet. But so there, there's just there's a handful of things. The, the one thing is that I watched. I've started watching the uh, Tim Allen Santa Claus trilogy, and uh, <laughs> and there's just so much to talk about with that. <laughs> But I think I'm gonna wait, and I, 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 I was like, I, I, well, my 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 new friend whose work I I have been uh, binging, who's gonna come out. He's he's a writer director. We could, so that that unlike this one other thing is something I can talk about with him. So so that means I'm leading with the following. So and but I'm gonna try to make it give you the Reader's Digest version. Okay. This gets it, it gets tragic. It gets touching. D D Dave, are you cool? Are you cool with this? Are you still cool with this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dave yeah. said you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess I kind of tip something by referring to Dave in the front row. But the thing, oh. so wipe your brain of that because <laughs> it's gonna the, ruin the dramatic tension. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Uh, so, it, it, like, for the second time in, in, in a month, uh, because the, the front gate on my uh, lavish three-bedroom property in Las Feliz is, it, I don't know if it looks like an apartment building's gate or, or, or if, like, the Proud Boys are having meetings in Las Feliz now and, like, they're just getting enough Dutch courage to, like, wander to my place, but then they, they're so drunk they forgot why they're there. But it, it, there's, been, there's this new tradition mounting where my doorbell will ring and then I'll turn on the security camera and I'll see uh, the creepiest thing you could ever see, which is a dude who has no idea where he is just trying to punch fucking codes on a, on a, on a keypad. I, uh, this, this, this is, this is, this is the second one. And, uh, I, I like, it's like, 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 so it's like, I think it was one thirty in the morning doorbell. You wake up from a dead sleep doorbell ringing. D like, Unless you're 24 years old, there's no way 1.30 a.m. doorbell is going to lead to... I, I'm trying to think back. I'm like, maybe that's Andy Dick. Like, 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 <laughs> like, like, like when, I was, when I was in the mood. Like, like, like hey, you know, life yeah, works we, in weird ways. Like, let's <laughs> fucking rock and roll. Yeah. Like, 
but like like maybe or, or like hey man that's the lonely island guys they're yeah. like they, they came over to open a laptop and show me dick in a box before they upload it to the thing you know like what hey 1 30 in the morning is a magical time if you're young right. i am 45 years old i live in a, a fucking house at the top of a hill i right. have a gun that i barely know how to load i have a girlfriend that i don't want to watch die uh and and just the doorbell rings and it's interrupting my dreams about minecraft and i'm like who could that possibly be? Turn on the cameras, and it's like slowly comes up. These everything looks creepy in night vision, um, and uh, there's, a, there's just no way to look comforting when you are standing on someone's porch uh, in night vision uh, camera mode. Can we? I I I will show the people, and if you're we heard there was a clip. Yeah. If you so if you're listening. <laughs> The craziest thing about that is that it says front door in yeah. the corner. So this guy's terrifying. Crazy. That was like that he he stood there and did that for 40 minutes. So um, he's punching in codes? Some of the some of the time he was we were trying to figure out if he was A punching codes, B masturbating. He because could, all you could see right, is like his, see his, his arm, arm going like this. So I was like, I was like, well, Cody and I are just standing there going. I think he's trying codes, and I'm like, why would he try codes? Where does he think he is? What rave does he think is starting without him? That where it's like he rang the doorbell, the dogs are barking, nothing's happening, and he's just like, like, it, what? What are you on that makes you think like? Well, it's like, come on, there's nine numbers. How yeah. long could it take? And we had a, he was he was jamming on it for so long that I was like, Cody and I had the conversation. I'm like, I loaded my Glock. A Glock 19? I it, uh, I don't know if it's a 19. I, I think it might, I don't know what it is. I'll it's tell you. I'll tell you what it, it is. Be, it's it hard to a... fucking load. I like. <laughs> I'm getting a revolver. Gonna, about That's to it. I'm getting a revolver. Yeah. Because these fuck. Have you ever load? Have you ever put a bullet in a clip? That's none it's of your goddamn business. Fucking hard. Oh, sorry, Brandon. Sorry. Ah. <laughs> uh, Brandon, come back. <laughs> come back. <laughs> I, mean, I'm a, I mean, I might have spit on a couple bullets to make the seal tighter. <laughs> <laughs> you should have called me. <laughs> I was just, I'm like, these springs are strong. Like, I, like I, why, why do you think my thumb has this much muscle in it? I bought a device that's designed to compensate for weakness. <laughs> why would you make it so hard to load? Like, I, I, like what, why is the bullet a fucking bench press? Uh, like, I, if I could bench press, I would go down there and karate chop this guy. Um, the, uh, but, but we really thought about it and we were like, you know, I was like, cause the, 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 you had said before you go like, when you touch a gun, like they do studies, they hook, oh, a, yeah. they hook a person up to the, the things, they monitor their endocrines. When you touch a gun, your testosterone spikes, spikes real, real hard. And, uh, I would be lying if I said I did, there wasn't a strange, weird background program in my head that wasn't, I don't want to say. I hope I, I hope something happens. It's no, not, that's, that's what not, testosterone but, is doing. But somehow in the background, in the far background, like not in a way that's real, but there was a noticeable. I was like, well, it, it, I, I'll tell you the, the the big headline was that I'm still not over. I'll still stick to this. I'm sorry if this hits a political button, and I understand that we live in very very painful times. I, I do, I don't want to hurt you by saying this, trigger arguments with your loved one. If you're listening, I, I'm going to subjectively use my I statements and tell you how I felt and how I still feel. Like It made me feel uh, uh, very happy that I bought a gun. Yeah. Because it was 40 minutes that at the, at the, at the, it was like rang the doorbell and we're looking at him, we're going, shit, it's another one. He's drunk. He's drunk. But he was like doing shit and it was like he was tapping there was a tapping on the front door, and it was like, is that his key? Is he, that's his key. He's just tapping his house key. I was like, what if it's a fucking Wolverine blade? Like, like what is it? What if he's carving an eye? Look at this. What if he's carving a perfect, perfect eye? Look at this motherfucker trying to find a reason to shoot. Ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what testosterone does. <laughs> but we but we had the car. When we were like, okay, the cops aren't coming because what Cody called the non-emergency. We didn't want to call nine one one. Like we we called the we called the police. Like you call special pickup. Like there's a poor person on, uh, out on my uh, porch. You know, it was, it was like like it's not it's not an emergency. You know, like that kind of like guilt about, and then that turns into outrage when they don't show up right away. Right. Where the fuck are they? Um, <laughs> But Cody, Cody called the non nine one one police number three one one. Los Feliz, they show up so fast. So we were like, we were like, 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 like it was like we we're, we're, we felt like if anything, like, like, I feel bad for this person. Like, 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 but also he's terrifying us. And like, like, is he going to, like, like when you're drunk and like that frat blackout drunk? Like we've all heard stories from friends. Even some of us may have these stories in our life where it's like. Yeah, and then I went back, and then I ended up. I I had this dream where I was taking a shit, and then I was a, at a, in a sink at a Pizza Hut, and I had shattered the window. You know, so like you black out. Like, what if he? What if he goes from? What if he goes from harmless mode to like? A black bear at a camping site, like right. like like there's marshmallows in your glove box mode, like yeah. where it's still he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, it's but, scary. Uh, yeah, and so like, what what if when he starts acting kicking right. the door because he, he's so whatever he thinks the house is is like he feels like he should be inside and not outside. Right. And so Cody and I are like, okay, so what do we do? And, and you know, I, I don't I don't know if this is something you're allowed to pat yourself on the back for, but I was like. We will call the dogs into the bedroom, close the bedroom door. He can do whatever he wants to the house. We'll continue to wait for the police. And if he comes in the bedroom, then I'll shoot him. What? What the fuck are you waiting for? <laughs> if he makes a sandwich. If this guy sits down and makes a sandwich. I'm, if I'm, he I'm, just, I'm, but I'm, if he touches I'm, my muscle. You went from I, I, ready I'm to not. kill this dude to like, if he starts to binge watch too much cable. <laughs> if he... <laughs> It is just, he can't delete I don't want the motherfucker to use. He can't episode. use my resources. If he uses my resources, I'm gonna be pissed off. But this is the privilege that comes with security cameras and all this shit. Like everything's very much in control. And I, I want to note that too, that because like, we were talking about this other thing where I was like, I don't know, just that that panic where the cops the cops eventually came, and that. That second where it looked, I was watching them on the camera that I also have installed, where I can see the cops showing up, and when they didn't do exactly what I, I was, I was like, I was, uh, Cody and I are like, fuck no, fuck you, like, like, like it was sort of like, like, God damn, you can ima imagine, like, this is, this is an example of, of chaos happening and everything's under control, yeah. and, and, and like, it's, it's, it's the safest version of this you could get, and still, like, the, the. The closeness that I felt with violence, the 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 the, the, the it wasn't like oh well, the last thing on my mind is whether or not to shoot someone. It was like I bought the fucking gun, like I bought a power drill. You never know. You need to put up a shelf, knock a guy down, put holes in him, kill him forever, ruin your life. Um, yeah, I bought. That's what, that's what I bought it for. Well, time to load it up. Now I'll tell you what. If it comes in, it'll shoot him. I'll do it though, boo. It's just kind of like 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 it's we our fucking culture is insane. Here's it's like I'm, it's like Chekhov's gun. Like you're introducing the gun, so like you're not just doing. Oh that. right, right. The first act, like, the gun right, in the first but act. But like literally, I mean, it's weird. But like literally, in your life, you're not doing it. It's like, and then it'll never come into play. Like buying a gun is kind of like making a making a choice that's like I might I might choose to shoot to someone in a way that's not on the table before you buy a gun. You know, so like at that point, I think you're thinking, I mean, and I'm, this is not like a, like an indictment or anything, but I think that once you own a gun or have access to a gun, I think, you know, you might think differently because a gun is an option available to you. And so it's just yeah. like, that's just something, I don't know, that that seems like something that we should at least talk about. I mean, you are, but it's yeah, like, yeah, no, I'm trying that's to an be interesting that. concept. I, I, I want to be honest. Oh, say I had that same thought. Thank you so much. You're right. I, I, because I, I'm, I'm saying I'm being honest using my I statements. I'm trying to also be accountable by saying this is not my political opinion. This is not even my personal philosophy opinion. As a cowardly person, I bought that gun because I got scared about the world falling apart. I bought that gun as like a, a donation to a religion that, that, that professes that we're all going to kill each other. And I and I and I paid I put I put money in the collector's dish for that church that that that, that uses that money to build itself and preach more. I fell for it. I I I put money into it. I got my my thing. 
And what I'm, what I'm, what I'm confessing is that, oh, it works. Uh, 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 any random thing that happens, you're happy you bought the Black & Decker people shooter. Yeah. Um, uh, like the way you're happy you got the dust buster because, oh, I dropped the glass. There's shit everywhere. Yeah, but I bought this thing and thank God. It, it, <laughs> it, it is that, that, and that is the problem. Right. Uh, it is pretty simple <laughs> because it's like, yeah, that, that shouldn't be how we're thinking about human life. Or at least they should then have extra steps involved to kind of make it harder because that, that's a problem that needs to be talked about, addressed, thought about, researched. Yeah, I don't know, man. But I, we, 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 we called them and uh, the cops eventually show up. Right. They come yeah, up this, and has, like, this is a good again, story. Every time addition. you have a problem, it's like, holy shit, I love the police. These like wonderful like people, they come up with the flashlight. They're like... The people call. They, 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 they could see them. You, could, you could see them like calling in. They're like, they're like, they're like shining the flashlight, and they're not seeing the guy. And I know. And I then they're know. like, "What the fuck did you do?" <laughs> Look, I mean, there's shit in the news right now that's all about this. Like, the, 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 I believe. Yeah, I mean, I, I had to call the police once, and it, I, I, that's how. I mean, that's how scared I was of this white person. <laughs> but I was like, I will take my chances. <laughs> I don't want to say like, oh, I'm well aware of how privileged it is, I, but I mean, because I'm not aware of the ceiling of it. But I'm like, the whole time I'm thinking like, Jesus Christ, this is such True, a though. fucking luxury. It is though to be able I, to call people and like, like, yep. like watch them come up, like to pray for the police to show up yeah. and to be so relieved when they do, and to have them come up and they and they and and, and the fact, listen, like, we'll talk about like, what if the guy was black on my porch? What if I'm white and the cops are white or whatever they are? It doesn't really matter. The cops are cops are their own race sort of in how they view things like and it's that's not meant as a diss like i'm saying like cops have that the protective culture that, like what if the guy on my porch was black that was ringing my doorbell how, how would that affect when i called the police and what i was hoping would happen you know, like like yeah. what, what what how afraid yeah. would i be like okay what if this yeah, what if, what this, if this goes pear shaped? Like, I mean, like, like, yeah. like, and, and I was thinking none of that, and it's partly because of the white privilege of the homeless guy on my porch. He well, had privilege. Yeah. He picked because I was like, K cops, get over here fast as you can. Should like fucking run up the steps, and like if you see a weirdo, grab him and ho <laughs> hoist him out of here, not fearing about any kind of like yeah. fucking like thing. Like right. when we're in a world where we read Facebook stories about. A black uh, social worker calls the pol or, or is helping an autistic person, and he gets shot. Of, like like all this yeah. shit that we've we're, we're, we're been fed. So yeah. Anyways, whatever. Well, I don't even know why I'm bringing that up because it's like thanks, Dan, for pointing out the if whatever. I, it's here's, fine. here's here's the point of my story. But, but the, yeah, that's a true that's a true thing for all people. Right. Um, you will. You, there are times when we call the cops, and we're all very happy to see them. There they really are. I just had to make the joke. But really, the <laughs> truth is. Even even myself. Obviously, it's a cop. class thing, not a race thing. Like if you live in Bel Air and it's you're a, a fresh thing. prince, you. <laughs> I think it's a crime thing. If you if you're a black person and you're calling for a misdemeanor, then everybody's cool. Right. If, if it's a murder, then and there's that camaraderie like, like, like when it's her. raining and you're yeah. like, oh, it's raining. Like yeah. when the when the drunk guy hit my garage, it was just like a million cops outside my place. Yeah. Everyone's joking about my Segway. Right. Like. <laughs> And it was just sort of like I love cops. Like, like it was just sort of like high school. Like, like, uh, like. But if you were drunk, getting bounced out of a bar, Ooh. and because it was like you had an argument with like maybe the bartender said some shit that you right or wrong thought was like right. too right wing for you to drink at his bar, and like you knew you're, all of a sudden the cops are like it, that. The, you the, the, the your encounter with a cop can make the difference between you. You could spend a life in prison. I know yeah. that sounds hyperbolic. For, no. <laughs> but like the that can escalate. I guess I because I saw a documentary on Netflix about it. Like how about like like, right. like even if you're like the, there was a, they like they purposely did two stories. One guy was a black guy. One guy was a white guy. And the white guy like came home, found his mom stabbed to death, and like because he was like freaking out, and the cops were kind of like acting weird about his mom being stabbed to death. He ended up a prime suspect and hauled into jail. And like the story just cascades from there, where it's like he ends up in prison for like his whole fucking life mm. because anyways, whatever, like, come on, Harmon, get off of this. There's an important part of the story. That's like story. So tragic. It's a good story. So I sent this video of yeah, the guy on go. my porch. Thank you to Dave Klein. <laughs> now, if you know what Dave Klein looks like, my personal trainer, 
He's got long blonde hair. So the video I just showed was of a guy that's got long blonde hair. He's got some leaves in it, and he's in a, a jacket, and he's like swaying back and forth on my porch. So I sent Dave Klein the next day. I sent him a text, sent the 11 second video of the guy, and I said, Hey, don't come over here at 1:30 a.m. again. I almost shot you through the door. That's a good joke. Yeah, that's great. It's a great joke. Every, everybody loves being told, they, hey, I think this guy looks like you. Uh, Dave's response, and I went, it's like, 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 I asked Dave if I could tell this story, so like, I think he probably would have realized he's a hero They'll be on in his the first side. place, but uh, like, really think about the fact that I said, Dave, can I please tell this story? And he's like, yeah, you can. Uh, Dave responded with, Dan, I apologize. This video is sobering and a major wake-up call for me. <laughs> I'm going to get some professional help for my drinking. Thank you for bringing this to my attention and also for not shooting me. <laughs> and I looked at that and I was like, that's kind of a tonal departure <laughs> from the youp guy. Like, He's usually not that dry. <laughs> he definitely has a high IQ, so he's capable of doing dry comedy. <laughs> he just doesn't usually choose to. Uh, and, but I just, but I didn't bother to, I didn't right. want to insult him by going, you, you know it's a bit, right? Or I don't know, I just didn't, that's like. like or we're, fucking we're, hilarious comeback, man. You don't want to yeah, insult yeah. him. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I also didn't want to weaken myself right. by going like, LOL. I'm like, right. no, fuck you. Like. <laughs> Hey, if you're going to be that funny, welcome to the big leagues where you play to the silence. Congra I mean, I'll, I'll admire you when you're dead, bitch. That's, that's the comedy rule, man. I'll, I'll fucking pour a 40 on your casket and be like, I never fucking laughed at you, bro. You were so funny. <laughs> I was too busy tagging my own bits to listen to your tags. <laughs> <laughs> so two days after that, Dave rings the doorbell to do our workout, and it's uh, open He's the door. He's completely shaven bald. <laughs> I see his face, and I go, "Hey, man!" And I was about to. I, I think I started to do a callback to the joke. Where I was like, "Hey, man!" Because I couldn't wait to talk to him about right. it, my funny bit. And, and, it was and a I was good like, joke. "Hey, man! Don't like again. Just to remind you, don't." And and, he, and he's like, "Dan, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry." And as soon as I saw his face, I was like, "What? No! It wasn't you!" And he's like, "What?" <laughs> And I said, I said, did you wake up in jail? <laughs> no. <laughs> it wasn't you then. And he's like, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, I enrolled in rehab. He's fine, you're fine. Because he drank, that night he drank 12 beers. You're doing fine. And took an Ambien. <laughs> So he woke up in his own bed. He but didn't know what happened. He was like, hey, I don't know that that's not me. Right. So he, he had a good faith rock bottom. Uh -huh. like I, I, I gave him the gift, I guess. I still can't figure out if I did him a favor. I don't know how to process that. Yeah, he, you, thanks to you, he ascended from rock bottom, which it, you also inflicted. It's, it's, it, it seems really unfair that he called K K Kaiser Permanente and said, <laughs> I'm coming in. I, yeah. And yet, if you, if, it's, if you have a map of the universe in your head where it's possible you <laughs> did show up, right. when you look at a video, he, he said, I called my dad. Anyway, so, so, so it's like, so please res respect fucking Dave Klein's self-aware question mark, but like, like, a, like a, if, a, if a question mark can be a Mobius strip, <laughs> so self-aware that you, that you allow for yeah. fucking the uncertainty, which I didn't mean to exploit, right. obviously. I never want to fool anybody, but that, I thought it was just a. Ama I've never experienced that where I'm like, no, 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 it wasn't you. It's like, whoa, oh, oh. Of oh, course that so wasn't much... you. And I kept looking, like, then I started thinking, by the way, Dave, while we were working out, like, I was doing tummy crunches, and I was like, I kept, I had to keep going, and I was like, oh, is, was it him? 
<laughs> no, you can see the video. His the beard, the yeah, bearded no. man. Look at that's a pissy beard. That the Dave has a no, much he's got nicer a beard. beard and stuff. But yeah, I, no I, worries, I, man. It was just it was just because of your reaction. I was like I, my cynicism. I was like, well, wait a minute. What is I started doing? Because cal- well, just because it was like you should be saying, well, I don't. You should be going. Oh, I don't have that jacket. But Dave said, right, I that's do have jacket. that jacket. <laughs> It's hanging in my closet. Oh. It's it's camouflage, but it could be leather. Is it, is it sort of like he just he's just doing all the necessary. He's trying to be a good person, like, by, 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 by like eating the world halfway. And actually, in a world where people will convince themselves they didn't murder someone that they murdered, like, like we have true crime podcasts and ten uh, year jury trials about where people are just like. Yeah, they passed a polygraph test. Yeah, because they don't want to be a murderer, but yeah. they are. Right. Uh, in that in that world, Dave Klein, the Jesus Christ of of alcoholism, is like, yeah, I, hey, you did a bit where I, uh, I did, like, I say, hey, I'll fucking shit, fuck it, going to rehab. Well, because because of the weird possibility. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, uh, first thought, best thought. You, <laughs> you should uh, you should offer a service where you write people's rock bottoms. <laughs> When they black out, and you can come back to them and be like, "Yeah, man, you uh, you fucked a watermelon, <laughs> and uh, uh, you shit at a bar mitzvah." I will say that that dude, uh, uh, y- you have a full head of hair, whereas yeah. this dude was like sort of going bald, rocking three dreads. So that might have been the telltale. I did telltale. see him out there. I went outside and looked at him. I had to just get verification from Cody because of my face blindness. After we worked out, I did go upstairs and I go. I woke up Cody and said, "Cody, just double come for him." It what? wasn't Dave Klein, right? He's like, no. Right. <laughs> I was like, hey, also, no, no, no. what what happened? What was the end result? Uh, they 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 uh, by the time they came up there, he had disappeared from the camera. I think he was probably just seated, stoop like in the doorway, so they couldn't see him right away. They came up, and so you watch the cops like come up. It's like I just can't, but like like. Th- Feeling the f- fear to open your own door and then calling people whose job it is to like just rant. It's not even their house. and they have, I mean, I know that sounds so stupid to say, but it's just like no, that, it's great. That, where you're like, oh, I hope these guys that I like inherently mistrust because they're about not having fun uh, when I'm skateboarding in, in my Pringles commercial of my life. And it's just like... <laughs> So easy to like, like, fuck it. And, and it's just, you're just like in those random moments where you're just like, I hope I see a fucking guy like with a fucking big belt full of shit and yep. fucking, I hope his walkie's squawking. And, and that they're just like, they're trained to just like, they didn't freak out. I was like, why aren't you freaking out? Charles Manson is on my porch. You should be so freaked out. But they're like, what? Well, if that freaked us out, like, what would we? They came up and they, they that w- one guy hung back and you know did the thing and then the other guy was like came up and like stood him up and like they they cuffed him right away i think it was more about like we got to get this guy off the property i don't know what the rules are but they they took him down into the street where you could see that they i think they did like probably as a formality like a kind of Pat sobriety test yeah. and probably took him and threw him in the drunk tank but uh uh they they just kind of, yeah, they like squirted him out and then knocked on the door as they were still, like we went down and like, hey, how are you in our little pajamas? And they're, and they're like, hey, uh, do, do you know this guy? Do you recognize him? I'm like, nope, nope. Looks a lot like Dave Klein, but. Uh, right. right. <laughs> I think Dave, he's Dave who? Dave Klein. <laughs> it's not spelled the Jewish way. He's like a Viking. Okay. Dave Klein. I said K-L-I-N-E. Like, I really don't know a lot about him. Uh, you should, no, I'm kidding. Uh, anyways, but it was, it, was, it was like, thank you, guys. Thank you. And that was yeah. it. Like, and we'll never find out, like, what was that guy? Where was he? What was he on? How did he? I want to know those stories, not out of, like, justice. I want to know them. I want to yeah. know, who were you? It was a second guy. The first guy was, like, this weird, like, dude. You? He was, like, ch- kept checking his phone and trying the code. It was, like, he looked like he had been invited to some party that someone had told him a code. He was a little more conscious, and, and then he eventually stumbled down the stairs and got into a white minivan and drove away. I'm like, oh, that's great, okay. I wonder if you can find out what happens to him by checking the arrest record, because you didn't press charges. Right, so what would I look at? I don't, uh, uh, the, the date. 
of the incident. It's yeah. Oh, like, oh, it's, that's like all public information. You it's like an old tiny like medieval town. You can just be like, well, old man Simmons found a cat in the well. Like the da- yeah, the Daily Blotter. Uh, you want to do an incident report. And then if you did an incident report, they'll tell you what the situation. Maybe you can foster this guy. Okay. Well, so I... I- <laughs> I wasted a lot of time on that. I didn't waste it. It was fantastic. fantastic. I, 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 I grew a garden uh, uh, over there uh, with that. With that, that uh, uh, if, you, if, you see, if you see if you see Dave Klein, uh, 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 give him a lot of love and buy him a drink because that's a that's a rare personality that can take that and then like and then not say please don't talk about that in the show. Like I thought that I mean that's very giving and wonderful. Uh, Uh, but let's 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 make a new best friend. Let's uh, get down. I, I just finished binge watching the second season of the show. I've talked about it before. I thought the first season was so amazing, and like it's 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 an Amazon show, so like I you got you got a signal boost, or people don't see it. So uh, I I, I uh, just I, we'll we'll talk about his career and talk about the show. I, it, 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 I hope it's not an alienating conversation. If you haven't seen the show, I would recommend you watch it. I think it's really really interesting, and I'm so grateful. Mm-hmm. For him uh, being willing to come here and talk about it, uh, uh, the creator, writer, director of Patriot, please welcome Stephen Conrad. <laughs> Sorry if I made you wait a little, uh, a little too long there. I'm sure it's a little... Eh, that was the second time I heard this story. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, it was kind of like, well, okay, here's the thing. I got to talk about this. And I gave him a little brief version of it. Um, uh, yeah, so th- thanks for making Patriot. I just finished watching the second season. Uh, yeah, thank you for paying attention. And I bring the gratitude of our entire cast and our team of filmmakers who appreciate any attention. Uh, we have to go a long way from home to work on the show and... Uh, Where is that exactly? We shot in Paris, which was not, uh, that wasn't tough. Uh, But being away from your loved ones for that long and coming home and the show comes out and people don't even notice that it's come out, that part can be a little hard for... for, It's the the dark belly of the golden age of television. Yeah. Anyway, all I mean to say is thank you. Oh, no problem. I I, I really am so interested to talk to you about it because I, the, the first season, it was a rare event for me because if I start watching something with my girlfriend and she falls asleep or, you know, it, like, I don't, like, I, I really remember specifically, like, I, I chewed another half an Adderall so I could stay up and keep watching the rest of your first season because I was just really drawn in by the kind of, like, serialized story of, of this, like, weird world. It's a, sp- it's a spy uh, drama it, that centers around it's it's in the in the near past around the idea of uh, preventing Iran from going nuclear. So I guess my first question is, how ironic was that as a concept? Because recently, like I mean, I was, like, like was it, is it intentionally futile? Yes, yes. Yeah. And and when we started to make the show, it was especially futile because that. Um, the progression toward becoming a nuclear power was uh, headed off through diplomacy. Right. And then it's all newly up in the air. But uh, in 2016, it was a settled matter. Our story t- takes place in 2012. Where it isn't, there are great costs to trying to turn the tide of this election through uh, extra legal means. But we are in the past and looming in the future is the this notion that this problem was was right. fixed but the pe- but so the people the viewers are being told well this is happening before are we i don't want to use the word supposed to because you're an artist so you'll probably say you should feel however you want but i kind of like i'm going to ask anyway do you did you want me to feel like all of this is for nothing, or did you want me to understand that the stakes are high for people like this, the protagonist and his father? Well, I didn't want just you to feel anything, but that's the <laughs> way it turned out. But that, that's precisely the feeling that we were hoping to... Uh, Which one? Uh, uh, evoke. Oh, the, 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 this idea that there is futility from the onset. But that the stakes are high for them, and that they're believably high for them. What the y- fucking... Yeah. I hope Steve's okay. But but uh, the the stakes for us 
reduced to the stakes for like a dog day afternoon, which is just to survive the, right. the event of the mistake. I mean, it's like, I, so, so the, the way that I get introduced to the show was the strangest thing. I, I, was at a, I was at a meeting and we were talking about just different shit, just random shit. And somebody who I later forgot who it was, it was a person that said, have you guys seen this show Patriot? And I had seen like ads at the airport there were, there was like like the uh, Michael Dorman like like looking th at a through an interactive billboard or I was like what's this patriot shit who knows but did did you were you turned off uh, by the advertising no I didn't I was like I don't know someone else had got a TV show I I hope I'm better than them I, I don't I, <laughs> you know like you see you see an ad for a TV yeah. show I'm like how come NBC never did that for me or whatever I, you just, I just have narcissistic feelings but like. I like I like I like I, the guy looked charming. I, I I had no idea he was Australian. We'll talk about that later. That guy is so good. Yes. Um. But um. But then but then it's, you, know, you just get you oh you see this advertising oh there's a show out there it's called Patriot who knows what the fuck that means, uh, and then someone in a meeting that I was with said have you guys seen this show Patriot and what they said that made me bother to watch it was something that it doesn't even sound on paper like it should make me want to watch it which is basically like. It's like uh, it's kind of like an Ian Fleming novel if Wes Anderson directed it, which that might be incredibly offensive to you. I, I, I mean, it involves other creatives, and it's sure. like but it made me go, "What?" <laughs> and so I watched the pilot, and then I was just sucked in. I was sucked in by the cynicism. I was sucked in by the but the the there are. There, the themes that you seem to, uh, I don't want to dissect you and diagnose you. I want you to talk about what motivates you. Good luck. Um, <laughs> if you've listened to an episode of this show, you know I'm a bad interviewer. But like your thing with fathers and sons, your thing with nature versus nurture, your thing with sociopathy, these are the th these are the things that drew me in. Like the first episode of that show, what you're establishing is that there's this fucking strapping, really lovably hunky dude in a ratty sweater who is smoking weed in Amsterdam and you're getting through backstory that he's a CIA, probably black bag, wet operator, someone who's good at killing people and that his father works at the CIA and that he's been kind of like hanging out in Amsterdam smoking weed and writing songs about how he kills people for the CIA and performing them in open mic clubs. <laughs> and there's just so many amazing choices that the show makes in those first moments where it's like, oh, the CIA isn't going, we have to stop him from singing those songs. They don't care. <laughs> he's like, that's, he's just singing songs. And by the way, and, and you, we'll talk about it later, but you, these are all your songs. You're a musician, you write, you write and record these songs and stuff. But like he sings these songs about what he's doing, like his mission is like, like, like oh, I gotta, gotta kill a guy in a turban, and I don't know if he's good or bad, and I don't know what's up. But it's just, the guy's like, he's, he's, he's good at killing people, which is a sociopath's job, but he's, he either is or isn't a sociopath. Yeah, it, it is, it's all that stuff, Dan, for sure. Uh, spread out, spread out over here. <laughs> but... but <laughs> <laughs> this man is like a professional Dan Handler. <laughs> <laughs> Very insightful, Dan. However, uh... <laughs> right, Dan. A lot of things come chocolate, but this is a brownie. <laughs> <laughs> all of that is the case with the with the story, but uh, all all of it exists only to allow our guy to start tackling this task and a way that I hope would be more familiar to an audience uh, as it regards their own lives. There are so many mornings I wake up and I'm just not prepared for whatever it is that I have to do that day. Like a, even like a parent-teacher conference, I'm not prepared. I, buying shoes, I'm not prepared. I, I always feel like I'm, I lack some attachment to, to preparing and then finishing well anything that's in front of me because my mind's always somewhere else. Uh, and I know that that's true of most people, and I thought it wouldn't be any different for a person in this walk of life. Right. The, the, the job then was just to fill his head with uh, 
some ideas and some energy that would make him someone worth spending time with. And the sociopathy, it's because he was raised by a, a person who made him sort of super American and that he imposed on him values that you really have to be taught when you're little because you, you throw them off when you're older, when you reach the age of reason. Like you, patriotism is a thing that you learn in the Boy Scouts you just ought to be into. But then when you get older and you look around and then you think, well, all that means is that I'm obligated to strangers who probably don't have my best interest at heart. They and your dad, because he's a welder or a, or a bus driver, by the time you get to adolescence and are gonna shrug off and realize that it's bullshit, you've probably also already seen your dad yeah. pay the price for it too, unless your dad works for the CIA, in right. which case there's no reason for him to part from that company line. That I, I'm so glad, that like, 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 but, but well, okay, okay well, maybe this is a total derailment, but now, okay, talk about your dad. Talk about you and your, like, is this, how autobiographical is this or how? Yeah, my, I had a, a, a highly charismatic father who, was always the smartest person in the room, and it didn't matter if there were two people in the room or 200 people in the room. He always dominated the flow of events, and he was always the bottom line. And he was an intimidating person to share dinner with, uh, but I had this uh, inherent trust for any direction he gave me. I would feel like this must make sense because my dad asked me to do it. And then the older I got, oh my you're God. right, the, 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 he turned back to man size. He turned back to... To human over time, as you became an adult, you yeah, like you 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 saw him maybe up against shit, and you're sure. like, oh, and then our dad. politics were different, and right. uh, at some point it's hard. He just, liked he liked them. Uh, he liked uh, uh, he didn't like twenty seven dresses, and you're like, actually, that's really good. <laughs> 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 he loved Gremlins too. He's like, I can't believe how meta it was, and you're like, come on, it was yeah. a little. <laughs> it kind of ate itself a little bit. A when little are we going to talk about Tim Allen's Santa Claus? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. we we'll get to that later. This is too. I can't. I'm. I'm no, like. Uh, I'm really. I'm really like fanning out. By the way, because oh, like, 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 like I really have a lot I'm, of respect I'm, watching you. Thank like you. like 20 episodes of you. I'm so up for it. I appreciate it so much. Uh, so and it's amazing that what I'm hearing yeah. is like I really cynically thought I was not going to hear what I'm hearing because honestly, one of the least accessible things about this character is his weird compulsion to please his father. I really don't, I, like I fixate yeah. on my father and I, I have to run like what ifs in my head of like if my dad was the kind of dad that, that asked things of me, which he wasn't. I respect the fuck out of my dad and would love to gain his admiration, but, yeah. there, but there's, the, and, and it's like, but this idea of, because this character, he's just physically tortured and emotionally. But it's crazy where it comes from. I remember reading an article, an interview with Emilio Estevez, and they asked him, did, did, did his father, um, did, did he urge the kids to be in that business? And what Emilio said was, no, I, I think we both just admire our dad, and if our dad was a roofer, we would be in the roofing business. And that, that made sense to me. I, I didn't have that kind of, uh, I didn't adhere to my father like that. But I, I think you need a father. And if you're fatherless, you'll feel it. You'll be groping in life for uh, some lessons you might learn more easily than the hard way. And yet fathers can be the worst thing. That, that <laughs> and then generally turn out <laughs> yeah, to be Yeah, you case. like need one, but it's not the end of your problems yeah. having one. It can be... Uh, it's, I, I am endlessly fascinated by it. I want to ask you a question that is part spoiler, kind of, if anyone in the audience is like has not seen the show and therefore is going to watch it. I don't think this is a tremendous spoiler. It's not like a plot spoiler. It's a little bit of a character spoiler, but I can't, I need to ask you about it. This father is the actor who plays Locke from Lost. What's that actor's yeah, name? Yeah, Terry Quinn. So, so, by the way, this cast is just fucking incredible. Mm -hmm. Kurtwood Smith is, 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 every single actor is is like just kind of like someone that you 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 just like watching them talk yeah. and, and uh the the but so that father in the second season there's a distinct point like right about smack in the atonement with the father section of the story circle mm -hmm. of the second season about 3 quarters through where Nerd. where 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 it's all of a sudden and maybe I'm wrong about this for the first time, it's revealed that his father doesn't do 
wet work. No, Doesn't you, do you, physical you, conflict. You, you're dead on. That's, it, that was devastating for me. Yeah. But, I was but, like, oh, no. I thought, I thought he would give me <laughs> such Sorry, advice. this is a boring interview. You're like, I haven't seen the show. What are you talking about? I was like, it's a CIA father and son, and like his, the son is like this fucking, like, 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 he fucking kills people for a living. It does shit that hurts him. He loses, like, limbs and figures. Anyways, but, but like. But don't you think that that is, that fathers expect th yep. their sons to do things that they can't do themselves? I, I do that, too, with my son. I say, why can't you get an A in science? I could never get an A in science, an A in math. And I find myself saying, well, I expect you, because you have a, you have a different intellect to be able to do that. And then I stop myself. And I, I raised my son in a way where I always quit when I started to say, well, if someone's picking on you, you have to fight them. Because I don't think I would do that. And it, maybe it would be that I just would chicken out, but I know that I wouldn't do it. But my father would tell me to do things that I knew he wouldn't do. Hmm. And, but that is a, a small identification of a large thing that our guys in government ask our young people to do, and they would never do it. How many presidents have we had who, in a row now who haven't been in the army, and then they're so happy to send our young people out like they're little army men in their Well, and certainly if you're, a, if you're a patriot, part of being a patriot, you, you can't allow for that concept of like, wait a minute, the... Uh, it was a lot. I was in my 40s before I learned because my ex-wife's dad was a uh, 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 what do you a chaplain in the Navy. That was the first time I actually learned that officers don't come up through <laughs> the ranks. Oh, they could just start there. Yeah, yeah, they just start an officer school, and it was like especially the chaplains. That'd be funny though if they had the chaplains in there at the beginning. You know, I was just <laughs> asking them like yeah. military questions. I was like, just answer me questions about how the Navy works, and then along the way, I'm like, wait a minute, go back. Wait, what? And it's like, oh yeah, no, infantry, like regular rank and file people, they can actually. There's a ceiling at like sergeant. If you're going to be a general, you go to a special school yeah. called you're going to be a general, right, maybe. Right. Uh, and, and, and then my question is, like, why doesn't that just destroy everything? And the answer is patriotism, not as opposed to uh, the pride we feel in a system. Well, it, that, it is, that, it's precisely what we're writing about. Yeah. And, and, so, and so it's like, that, it's like if your dad's saying, I'm, I'm, do you think that our protagonist in Patriot, do you think he thinks that he's a smart person? Do you think he thinks his dad is smarter than him? We caught up with him at a time where he's too overwhelmed by events to think. That his challenge is... He knows that thinking is a big, big problem. The only, the only space he has to express anything other than marching forward is it, through the music. So he, he he's, doesn't contemplate the right or wrong. He fights to get out of the fix that he's in. And the show... It, it only takes place over 17 days now, and we're 20, we're 20 hours in. I know, there's all this nonlinear shit. You do so many things. This is the highest compliment I want to give you, and I hate when people pretend that they're backhanded compliments or compliments. I, I really do not mean it this way. <laughs> I want to say that, like, I, I disagree with your, or not disagree with, I'm befuddled by some, cre some choices that you make so often and and i'm still riveted like i i will go like wait does this guy i will ask myself every tw 10 minutes while i'm watching your show is this guy a sociopath i will ask myself if you're republican or democrat i'll ask myself if you're if you well, I'm a if, if you think that <laughs> Me, me too, me too. I know. I, said I will ask myself if you yeah. think I know, like, I know what you mean. it's funny to like, like bully people, or if you're like doing what I do in Rick and Morty, which is like, hey, it's a fucked up universe. I'm like, doing what you do. Innocent I'm people to, I'm suffer, to do what but you like do. you do it in a way that's like very challenging sometimes. And but also the results are it's incredibly funny because I believe that the guy is real because he's a, he's in a terrible job. He's like the equivalent of a sewage plant worker. Yeah, well, the, it, 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 he has to work in shit. Uh, the the show it focuses on people who break things that can't be put back together, versus the shows that concentrate on problems that can't be solved, swept under the rug or put in the past. So, so in that sense, there's a little bit of a different bargain we have with the audience, where you will well, if you take Dog Day Afternoon, which is a model for us. I think you know within 10 minutes that they will, they will not accomplish that goal. 
Accomplish the goal of what? Of robbing the bank, getting away with it. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. The narrative goal, yeah. Right. And you know it will end poorly for someone you care about. Right. But you continue to watch. And the question that I ask as a filmmaker is, why do you continue to to watch? What what is it that compels you to stay interested in this thing? And I think that you, you make a connection to that kind of energy where you are just watching someone try to fix something that can't be fixed. Does it have to do with the women in the family? Because the, the mom is estranged. You know, like I keep, because one of the things that I ask, being from the Midwest like you while I'm watching this show, and there's kind of a, it's, it's sort of like the, it, it, so it's like, like I keep asking myself, well, when is the scene coming where, where, we, where we understand that the son admires this father so much? And then I think to myself, that scene is called the son becoming his brother. His brother's just like a, a diplomat. Like a, he's like kind of like it's. I, I don't want to explain your your characters, but I feel like the the part of the irony of the story is that the brother who is doesn't work in murder that he wishes he could. He he's a, it's a, it's like like he he's like very comfortable lying and like kind of digs it but he wouldn't be good at it. Is that Oh, uh, absolutely. The yeah. ha the happiest people in Patriot are the ones who work in government at at, at the level that um of congressman or cabinet member. But so there's all these guys, it's like all this masculinity and then uh it's almost like if you talked about it even for a second it's a seal that would break, and your father, for instance, would go, oh, my son just expressed. Like, is, you, can, you can come to your father and say, I'm in a mess, I'm losing my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm on a million drugs, uh, I, but what you can't say is, I don't want to kill this person, I am feeling insecure, I'm feeling vulnerable, because the dad would immediately, I've talked to like stunt my uh, uh, friends who are st stunt workers, and they go like, oh yeah, like uh, I, I, I had to get kicked in the balls and the harness failed, so Will Smith was just kicking my actual balls for 20 <laughs> takes, but I couldn't, I, I know I have a legal right, and I could have gone like, <laughs> my actual balls are being kicked, They're, I don't know if I can have children anymore, but it's the wild, wild west, it's gonna be a hit, and if I... <laughs> There's this, there's this stuntman code that's like, I, I'm here because I don't slow anything down. I am, the whole point of my job is someone says, it'd be great if someone could jump out a window, start on fire, and roll around, and you want to be that person. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 that, and, that, and that if you ever go, like, even if you nail it and like roll and everyone's applauding, if you stood up and said like, huh, kind of touch and go there for a while, what does it go, <laughs> it was? Fuck you. Like that there's a fear there of like a vulnerability. Well, we have an episode in season two that if you, if you do watch the show, you'll recognize that we have these uh, title cards that introduce one episode after the other that are unique to the show. They're one Those are so great. Thank you. Epi they all have, uh, we don't call them episode 16. We say Patriot 16. Like, I hope that that creates this idea that there can be a... a an unexpected necessary next place to go. But in season two, we have an episode that's called Fuck John Wayne uh, for, for all the reasons that you're talking about. And I thought, why don't we just say it? We'll put, write it on a shirt and we can make some noise about people before us who used our art form to make themselves rewarded and make other people diminished right. by their make-believe. I, I love some people's make-believe, and I don't like other people's make-believe, and I don't particularly like his. So, so we had, we, I think we were very clear about that, that we are on the side of the people who believe that that kind of bravery comes with an, a, a, a terrible cost. Right. And this is a comedy, by the way. But there are people in your show, <laughs> I mean, like let me let me let me throw some questions at you because we're talking about tonality. So like like the the little fella that comes to Paris and is like he's the little cop from Milwaukee and yeah. he and 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 our our hero is drunk and high and I'm so resonating with this moment where he's like I have gotten so fucked up, so drunk, so high. I'm having such a good time with my friends, and oh these cops have followed me to Paris and uh, and one of them is. 
little. He's uh, I don't know if he's clinically a little person. He's a little he's a little person. He's he's so little that they talk about how little he is, and they talk about how strategically, therefore, he's he you we don't have to fight him because his strides are shorter and all this stuff. And like there's a mo there's the moment before uh, our hero. "Quote unquote," like gets into the cab. He's so drunk and so high, and he he's like he's doing the actual traditional like you know, he's holding the, the little guy's yeah. head so his, he can't punch him. And it's sort of like you know I asked him I asked him not to do that. You know I asked him not to do that. And he Mike Dorman he said it's impossible not to do that with that, that thing. When but but it was but I mean and you, are you, you're thinking like are you thinking like like life is so cruel like it's like, like it's almost like a like because I yeah but hey, I'll tell you this story because this yeah really, what do you want this <laughs> this really happened I mean, what's that special yeah well if you didn't want him to do that what did you want no I, tell me the story go ahead <laughs> <laughs> I think this is true. <laughs> Well, we were going that's how, to oh, believe okay. you. That's the. That's how the Iliad begins. When, when <laughs> the five <laughs> best. Yeah. That's actually how your show begins. Uh, the, yeah. the entire show is is appropriately. There's the whole wraparound is there's a there's some kind of hearing happening where everyone is going answering I, questions from an unseen source. Are going, oh, uh, this is what happened. I think it is true that in the 1980s, when cities were all broke and you know, falling apart and crime rates were going through the roof, that in Jersey City, New Jersey, the, so many policemen were being injured that the insurance companies were growing, going broke paying out their uh, bills, their health bills. They, they instituted size restrictions that were new to the police force. Cops who weighed too much had to go work in an office and cops who were under a certain height had to go work in an office. So they took good police officers off the street. The part that... Uh, I like the most that I think is true also is that they t gave them a three month period before they were gonna pull them out, pull them off the streets and into the offices. And the idea was that if they could make a series, if they could make a series of like spectacular arrests, if they could distinguish themselves the way that policemen do and win awards, they could stay on the streets. So what I pictured when I heard that, and this is the part I actually think happened, that there were a bunch of really tiny policemen running around trying to make really important arrests. <laughs> so Seven dwarves just hauled me off to jail <laughs> talking about they getting promotions. So picture, picture a, an office space now, the ones who couldn't do that working in an office with each other, like the cop with one leg and the overweight cop and the tiny cop, are we trying to maintain your dignity in that environment? These are those policemen from, right. from Milwaukee, and they, they, have, they happen on some evidence that could allow them to bust this whole thing open, and they decide that they can do something about it, and they're very good cops. We do love all of them, and you reference the fuck John Wayne thing, which is one of those other cops. He does a monologue, says, I... He was a war veteran, and he lost, he got injured so much that it hurts when he walks, and for the longest time, he uh, uh, was embarrassed to walk because the face he'd make w uh, when he would walk would cause him pain, and he was worried about the face making him a pussy, and he was a soldier after all, and he, he, he one day burst through a membrane by making a t-shirt and writing on marker and they sh you show MOS footage flashback of him doing it. It says, fuck John Wayne on his shirt so that he can now walk around a track by himself. It's a shirt for nobody but himself because John Wayne's name was Marion and he didn't go to war and he... Uh, he, 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 yeah, he had, he had like, like All of that stuff is an illusion and in fact what's not an illusion is the John Wayne syndrome of men feeling like they have to be men so much that they actually do the least manly thing of all which is not admit that they are weak. That they that they have that they that they are in pain. Well, that's really cool and beautiful, and it's it's right where we want to be. But the but but episode. but we, but you do that with that guy, but the, the poor little guy, he doesn't have a story. He's just little, and you're like, <laughs> and, 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 and 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 I'm not. I'm swear to God, I'm not like calling you out. I'm like I, what, because it's like your show. It's a, it's 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 your sh your show does these things where I'm like like God damn it, why why'd you do that? But if I knew why you did it, you'd be Chuck Lorre. 
like, but like, it's not, like, it's and, not and over yet. Shot fired. Or, or <laughs> <laughs> Chuck can take it. Uh, well, yeah, if you fine. if you do care to like the show, you'll notice that everything comes back. Does it come back for that poor little guy? Well, he came back. With the, we stuffed him in a locker in the first season. Yeah, I know. He just then keeps getting abused because he's little. It's season. just. I don't, but but I'm not. It's, now it sounds like I'm calling you up. But I'm seeing. Like, I'm seeing like this. Oh, is, I, I but I have the same questions for challenge. God. Like that's a, that's a, that's why it's a big compliment. Because well, I don't know if I can because, do any because better. Because you're you you confuse me sometimes. <laughs> like what you what you'll do things like so the the Luxembourg police like there's this amazing th- like like the, uh, the layered decisions like the Luxembourg police station is this palatial. That's like a that's just a funny thing. Like if you go to Luxembourg, which has. A, a homicide rate of zero um, until our protagonist comes through town in the story, at which point it multiplies very quickly. Because it has a homicide rate of zero, um, previous to the narrative happening, the entire homicide department, because it's a less glamorous place, because if your homicide rate is zero, then that makes homicide the equivalent of, like, maybe giving parking, parking tickets. tickets. Yeah. And so the entire homicide department is women. And the and there's all these toxic men who are, like, in lesser departments, criminally speaking, who are losing their fucking minds that murder has come to Lux- Luxembourg and these and inferior yeah. women are in charge yeah. of solving it when they know... And and like the first season, it's like this is amazing conversations. Your 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 dialogue has this like weird mystical realism thing to it, where every single character in your universe basically speaks like one person. Is that an insult? Like 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 that? Like 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 they. <laughs> You don't bother with like, oh, this is Flo. She she's from Alabama, so she makes grits. Like you, like every character, whether they're an assassin or whether whatever language of the, they're, they're speaking, their language and their subtitles, like they all have the same um, uh, com, com, uh, propensity for well, they get I, lost I will, in details. I'll, I'll what I'll hear in, when you say that. <laughs> is that everybody speaks organically. Everybody speaks the way we do to each other. It's halting. It's casual. Right, like you don't bother to you do lose. what could be an insulting thing, which is to be a writer and go like, well, this person's a crawfish hunter, so I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna modify their oh. vocabulary or their patois or whatever. It's like, there's, they'll, it, like there's, it's an international spy drama. Yeah. So people will be speaking French, but the subtitles are like, it's like, yeah, they're saying, they're following these chains of logic. It's, it's, inc- it's really good, man. I hope you're not being insulted by the, what I'm no, talking to you about. Because I, 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 by the way, I do the well, same I'm, thing. I, I don't try to affect, like, I don't try to make characters. It's no, like, please don't give that a second thought. I'm so happy to be here to talk about any of it at all, and I know that you dig the show, and I love that it provokes these questions from you. It's our intention to be able to talk about the show like this. Now, the, the, this idea that everybody talks to each other with some recognizably regular uh, way, is, it's a choice of ours to, to make this thing feel like make-believe, but then also more believable than a Jason Bourne series. At right. The, the, it's more believable because of the emotional mm-hmm. dynamics, essentially. Yeah, or just the the, the way the, the people's appetites get expressed. That we uh, can concentrate on the ten things that someone wants to be able to feel satisfied or to have dignity. Could, people get counted in our show, counted on in our show, uh, considered in the show by each other in ways that allows them to help each other. John is not the only person in the show who needs uh, love. Um, they're all, the, the, the group that you identified, the little cop and the one-legged cop, they call themselves the broken toys. Yeah, yeah. But everybody in the show is a But is you a throw that away. Toy. You totally throw that away, right? The, the season two, it said one time, right? Right. right. The, I, that's what you, you, that, you throw shit like that away all the time. Like you'll just have three cops well, sitting now, there. But I'm, I'm, and then they'll go like, all right, the broken toys. And yeah. I'm like, what? Broken toys? Uh, like they're the misfit toys. They're the misfit toys. Well, yeah, that's an important distinction. But I... I I said broken. In season three, they recreate that. Um, season three. Rankin and Bass. Well, if, oh. if we're allowed to make one, oh, okay. but they recreate that Rankin and Bass stop motion Misfit Toys song together uh, in a Christmas episode. Jesus, that sounds unsellable. <laughs> <laughs> 
but if you want to do it, I can know some stop motion animation studios. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can help you with that. Award winning. Uh, have done similar things. Uh, I, th there's, a, you said something. That, so here is the fucking crazy uh, Mariana's Trench like question for me. Does this fucking show take place in reality or not? Because you defy for me, like I, you, it makes me twitch when I'm watching the show precisely because I'm usually able to like at some point go, okay, this is a metaphor or i.e. like it's like mystical, like, like, like you watch like a, like a crazy ironic uh, action movie where you start to go, okay, this is tongue in cheek, like, like, I, I, I like crank or uh, gun or shoot gun shoot 'em up or whatever, where it's like where you're like loading fingers into a gun and shooting people with their own fingers. The your your show it 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 jet skis like back and forth across the the wake of that because the the most fundamental things about traveling and doing things are what are driving things. They all make everything go awry. But I'm so curious about like how you think stabbing people and shooting people works because I don't, you, maybe you're right and I'm wrong or it's I, like every, people keep getting stabbed and shot in your show and they're like, I got stabbed. <laughs> and then they're like, can you, can you help me? And then, like, someone goes, yeah. Like, like I don't know. They just, like, don't seem to... I would... They, like, if I got my fingers shot off... Spoilers, sorry. Like, I would be like, okay, no more fingers, no more... This is, that's it. Take me to well, jail. my dad's been stabbed. What's that? My dad's been stabbed <laughs> a couple times, so... Oh, I don't know who... He doesn't work here. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was with you. Do you guys well, know can Dan's we, can we hear at least? Uh, can we hear at least one of those stories? Oh yeah, yeah. no, no. Let's. I, I'm happy to. Let's. T I want to hear about your dad being stabbed. He got. He got robbed on. Uh, what do you call it? New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve in L.A. And the guy was like, "Give me your money." And my dad was like, "Fuck off." And he was like, "No, give me your money." And my dad like was like, "Fuck off." And then he was like, "Wapa, wapa," and he he got him twice in is the head. Is that French? Is that French for redundant? It's uh, <laughs> it's French for stab. Um, but yeah, he caught him in the face. Great. It was good. Whoa. Whoa. They call him, I don't remember how to say Scarface in Spanish, but that's what he wanted people to call him. <laughs> I don't think it caught on. Um, but it happened in LA. And he went back and I was like, check this out. To Colombia where he lives. My dad lives in Colombia. Whoa. Hey guys, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry. No. This is all just to say... People can be stabbed. Yeah, I know. What the, there's so many amazing. Like, like here's here's an example of your show being both grounded and absurd in a way that completely draws me in. There's a cold open of one of your episodes that I almost wanted to like transcribe and just read aloud. I, I really am regretful that I didn't do it because people should. I I, I, I want to like look at you as like a. Like you're 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 you write incredibly like like you're writing and directing so many like. Is it all of the episodes, or I did all the episodes in season two? And I, 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 did I, I don't even, I don't even know. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck again with this guy? Like, like written and directed. Jesus Christ, are you uh. Uh, you hogging credit, or are you a fucking animal? But like, like, like you, you're you're doing too much and stuff. And then I'm like, no, but the same voice is permeating. And there's like, there's a cold open where it's just our protagonist, and he's like ostensibly at some point during his training. And he's like looking through a weird textbook, and all you hear oh. is the off-screen voice of a CIA Tim, instructor. That's Tim Blake Nelson. Who is? Who is? What's that? That's Tim. Tim Nelson, the off-screen oh, instructor okay. is, is Tim Nelson. And who's? Just, it's just a big long monologue. The actor doing the monologue is completely off-screen, so all you're looking at is our silent yeah. protagonist as he just examines a textbook, and all you're hearing is a man explaining how to punch a dog unconscious. Uh, <laughs> It, 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 it's like it's not. That's extremely it, it's, my it's, shit. It's, 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 it's like people don't. 
like you, you, you run into a thing and the, the, the dogs are trained. What's the mistake that people make? Oh, they want to panic. They want to know. What do you do? What do you do to a dog? Well, the dog wants to do one thing. He wants to bite a limb. Offer him your, your, your least valuable limb. This Use the I've other limb to punch the dog yes. uh, until it's unconscious. I've, I've said on this stage I have said these things. <laughs> And the 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 instructor goes into a gratuitous and therefore further <laughs> yeah. grounding amount of detail about how the for God's sakes the dog's got a little tiny brain it just needs to be punched a certain amount of times before it goes unconscious if you were if you were in a fight with an eighty pound man you would laugh it off you would figure out ways to be <laughs> a dog is eighty pounds just for like it's like the instructor is an expert on how to beat a dog unconscious. <laughs> but is still offended by the idea that his students are, haven't figured it out yet, that it's easier than you think. <laughs> and, and, and all you just, you just see, and it's, but it's almost like it's Brechtian. Like, 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 there's yeah. a, like, like because they, and then just, Tim, Tim finishes with, please turn to page nine and we'll learn how to knock a woman unconscious with a bicycle. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and then and only then it cuts to over his shoulder where he turns the page and there's an entire, like that's, I love. But then it. Because it's it a hap- full no, it illustration in, of how to knock a woman out with a bicycle. Right. But then uh, Cool Rick does it in episode seven. Oh shit. Yes. No, of course yeah. he does. No, yeah. I, did, I, did, I did, I'm not going to say I knew that a woman would be knocked out with a bicycle when I saw that illustration. But I, yeah, I mean, you're saying that like it's like, oh, that validates it. That no, doesn't, I'm not saying that. No, 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 I don't mean validating knocking women out with bicycles. That's not what I mean. <laughs> I mean, as a writer, I mean, you didn't, you, 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 you can Where do that or Jeff? not do it, and that's <laughs> gravy. I'm, I, in, in isolation, right. that was, I thought was so fucking right. cool. Now, simultaneous to that, thank you very much, Dan. <laughs> si- simultaneous to that, we're, we're watching Mike Dorman do a Buster Keaton where he's, looking around this classroom to try to find another pair of eyes to latch onto to say, this is like, is, it, is it me or, right. or is being in the CIA going to be, uh, is it going to get worse before it gets right. better? And he can't find anybody to return that eye contact. So when you get to the end of it, what I'm hoping happens is the audience recognizes that he feels alone and overwhelmed. It's, I mean, that's, that's my point of access for him is that he happens to be good at something that he'd probably rather not do. His songs are, they're not McCartney-esque at their level of like, he's not like so into harmony as he is into total self-expression. Yeah. So it's like, he probably wouldn't be a platinum record. No, uh, he doesn't rhyme very it, much yeah. either. He more explains yeah. how, <laughs> Yeah. It, but he explains so well. He explains like, like he, he's so good at explaining the things that he's not allowed to talk about. Yeah. Which is such an unfortunate well, the reason, talent. The reason we made him a folk <laughs> singer is I recognize that if you're singing if you're singing folk music in a park, no one listens. They just walk by. <laughs> they don't even take the time to hear that he is planning on making midnight raids and so he's an invisible voice. Like that voice of his isn't heard by by anyone. Yeah, and, the, and the, the, what I love is that the CIA, Invis- the CIA in your voice? universe understands yeah, I mean, that. A, a they voice don't, that no one can hear. They, they, they come into a, a, a basement in Amsterdam and, and, and he's, he's laying out everything that he has to do. And the CIA's perspective is like, well, like what? Uh, yeah, they're, they're not, they're not, they're not, concerned they're not they don't care no. about that. What yeah. they care about is that he's not doing it. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, well, but th- th- this notion that there people do get hurt in the show, it's important f- for for so it's so important for us to separate from the other shows where that it can be the case, and that we don't ever walk by someone who gets hurt on Patriot. If someone gets hurt on Patriot, they become part of the Patriot family. They get integrated into the storytelling. The French policewoman that John makes blind, the shop owner who he has to steal the gun from, they all return. And then they, they, re, they return to us. They return uh, in uh, the form of consequences, but they don't return in the form of accountability. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, what, but, but... What but, if, you, if you think about... Uh, if you, it's, it's not cool to debate your show because your show should just 
do that. No, already. of course, that's the thing. Is like you're not trying to make a point. I'm, what right. I'm curious about is, as a writer, you're the god of your universe, right? So you make this universe. In your universe, this protagonist, in the one of the first things that happens, and this is the thing that sucked me into the show. His job is to get a, a, a job in Milwaukee at a pipe fitter like uh, company, which is a hilarious thing that you you. I mean, again, the chops that you have when you're the runner of the entire series is like all of the the presentation dialogue yeah. when, when people are, the, the difference between uh, men who are fantastic at talking about pipe fitting, and it's just like this weird fusion of gibberish and real pipe pneumatic terminology, and we <laughs> yes, don't know where yeah. one begins and what ends. I was like, like, like just these, like, it almost sounds like this like jabberwocky mm. poem of like, <laughs> like anyways, but he has to get this like job at this company, and there's one guy ahead of him for the job and he's next to that guy out in the street and he pushes the guy into an oncoming uh, bus or whatever. And the guy spends the rest of that season coping with his brain injury that he sustained in the, in this accident that got him the job. But it's like the, and I, and I, and I, I was like, Oh, that's cool. Like, like he, we're going to find out, why a human being would get to a point where just because his, f not to disappoint his father, he would push another man into the path of a of a oncoming car. Well, but that's the that uh, that's the an emotional reason. But the 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 reason John's being told that the math works like this: the, that country is trying to become a nuclear power. It's our government's position that we can't allow that to happen for any number of threats, reasons, and, and the, you, there will be peril if that happens. And your job is to not ask questions, but your job is to get this bag from A to B to stop that from ever happening. So there's always this idea that there's this greater consequence behind the smallness of our world of, of pain and injury, but the show doesn't care about that. I think you, you can tell where our heart lays in this show. Like we love the small moments. We, we have a, an expression in the writer's room, we just call it Durka Durka, when we're talking about the government stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's from Team America, and it just means these are just words that you won't remember, but it's the, it's the super plot, it's the plutonium. Right. Uh, Patriot doesn't want to live there very long. I mean, we need that to have a TV show, <clears throat> but... We but live you're in acting like the like the guy that got pushed in front of the car, like that he. I'm saying like I'm afraid of God in real life. I hate real life, and I write stories because I hate the fact that God like makes my sister retarded for no reason, and there's no resolution to that story. Like like that I do cruel things to people, and I never get punished for it. These are the things that I hate about life, and that I'm 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 sort of like. I feel like a difference between me and you is that, and I, and I truly do as a self-loathing writer, I go like, I think this makes me a, this is something that I see as a strength in you, or at least intimidating in you. Like, like, like I don't, like strength, weakness, whatever, better, worse, whatever, but it intimidates me about you that you don't feel that pressure to make sure that that guy got, that, that got pushed into uh, traffic, that he, I don't know, gets his comeuppance, which he really doesn't. He, he, he becomes like kind of a running gag. I mean, he, he's an annoyance, he's an obstacle. The, the, it's an inconvenience to our hero that he did that to a person, but it's like sort of like, oh man, I hurt this guy, so now this guy, I gotta deal with this guy. Should, the, the unspoken thing, maybe next time I'll just kill him. Yeah, you know, that, that 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 not you didn't say that. Right. God didn't say that no. in your universe, but it's well, like sort of like it never resolves yeah. in like, oh but, shit, I. Um, well, here's here, here's how I picked it back up. We we see we see John riding his bicycle at night in a really treacherous race where they intentionally run stop signs and run through railroad tracks, and he's singing a song about this young person who he pushed in front of a truck, and he says. He has to have a therapy companion now, and he's probably never going to laugh again. And what does that mean if you can't have laugh? If you can't, if you can't laugh, you probably will, can't have love. <laughs> so he sings this in a song on this bicycle in this race called the Charles Grodin. And then he hurts more people between episode two and episode 10. And then episode, <laughs> episode 10, he, he rides in front of a moving car so that he'll be killed. Yeah. So it, 
he's carrying the weight of that stuff. The, the, the momentum of that causes him not to want to be alive anymore. Oh, God, he wants, uh, definitely wants to die. But it's because of those things. It's because he's been told that these are, are, co these are collateral people, and he knows that they're not. So who could love their father that much? The answer is you, and... <laughs> And, 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 and like I, I respect that so much. Like the, the, you are like poor. I mean, you. I, I like really. I, I here's the thing. Like you. Uh, like, like we'll we'll talk about other stuff now. I wanted to take a deep dive into that. Like I, I, I thank God you're out there. Like, like, like pitching. Hey, let me do this. And then you're. And then you're just fucking like like to me. I just I feel kind of like like and like I have like a valve in my head that makes me go okay but yeah at the end of the day though you got to make the nice people happy and it's not like you're being punk rock and throwing your shit at the audience in a in a in a bar like what you're doing is like you're you know, a little bit like the protagonist or something that that you're like you don't have that like terror of disappointing strangers as much as something else you're answering some kind of i don't know you remind me of nick pizzolato the true detective guy like i don't it's just like i these writers that i'm like what the fuck did you do that for and they're like i don't know man i'm just fucking right and i'm like god damn it <laughs> like because because i'm like my answer is like why the fuck would you do anything to make people like you and like i and, and then i have this like nuanced <laughs> awareness of, of course they're not gonna like you if they ever get wind of that so well, I'll do a little thing where oh, he's the guy you love to hate, honk honk, but not really. Like, <laughs> like, like, and 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 then there's like, in this like streaming age of television where there's like, there's executives that are willing to buy your show because they're gonna put it on Amazon where it gets lost in a search engine for spatulas. Like, 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 you, I'm not, I'm not talking shit that that you have an experience. Like, you're, you've you got a second season, but your show is like. Being on Amazon is like a weird mixed blessing. It's like maybe you'll win an Emmy, maybe no one will ever find your show <laughs> ever because they're happy selling irons. Like, like, like it, it. I don't. I, well, what am I, well, like you're gonna respond to that and go, yeah, it's no. fucked up. You hear that, Amazon? <laughs> it's fucked up. Yeah, you should come over to Adult Swim. <laughs> But at the same time, it's like, like if you and I, if, if, if you were, if you and I were about, it's like, 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 well, this isn't going to work on CBS, ABC, or NBC. Right. So right. I don't want to live in that world where it's like, oh, it doesn't work on one of those three, so let's not do it. I mean, you made a show; it's like beautifully shot. Um, by the way, you're a Thank fantastic you director. Thank like, you. You're, 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 Thank you're, 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 you're fucking like almost obsessive desire to stay in the wide. I want to fucking kiss you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dan. You you play so many scenes in the fucking wide. I love it. Yeah. Like like I love you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> As a director, I love you. Thanks. I love that you're a writer and then you're fucking shooting it and you're like, yeah, fucking why why ruin a wonder? The fucking guy walks in, they have a conversation, fucking do it. Don't yeah. if, when you cut Thank to shit, you. it disrupts your brain. It's like a seismic event. What do I rocket my I'll, face into I'll, another I'll, guy's I'll, face? Yeah. <laughs> it's like you fucking play scene, like people <laughs> kiss. <laughs> Um, I love it. Rocket my face into another guy's <laughs> it's face. Not, it's something but that's, that's that's crazy because that's exactly how I feel. I feel like whoa, whoa, like not so fast. But man. you also like, do crazy POV shit. Yeah. Well, the show to is, illustrate the effects of drugs and alcohol yeah, and stuff like like yeah. like which is really effective. It's not obnoxious. Like you just show mm. his POV and you're like, yeah, he's pretty high. Well. <laughs> I, I just want the whoever cares to come to the show to really get lost inside of of that world because we do ask a lot of the audience. It can be peculiar in turns, but the cinema of it shouldn't be. I think I I, I don't want to look like TV. I think the show it takes it, it's a, a part of this newer art form where we inherited this thing from. The Sopranos and Deadwood, where you can just keep the right. story going. And I, I wanted it to feel like a new sort of thing. And I have these great filmmaking yeah. partners on the show. And um, I'm glad that you appreciated that part of it because it's part of the power of the show. If it works for you, it's part of it. Are Who's, you a Melch guy? Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah. yeah. 
Who's designing those title sequences, by the way? Because you, you mentioned it, like the title cards for your show. Yeah, it's a, it's a graphic designer named Alex Shen who works in San Francisco. This one kid. Oh, really? I mean, yeah, yeah. Hats, hats off He's to really them. He's really talented. Um, I just, one more thing about just, because I just want to, because you're, again, I mentioned the actors. So, I, like, as a writer and director, like, like uh, on, the, on the spectrum of uh, uh, actors are cattle, um, they're incredibly valuable cattle, so try to find the ones that are the best looking cattle. Um, <laughs> Um, all the way to the other end of the spectrum, which is actually, you know what? We barely do anything, and at the end of the day, either Joel McHale and Allison Brier in your show, or they're not. And if you like, like because they're attractive people, people will tune in. Like I've gone, yeah. I've gone to both places, like in my plot, where I'm like, you know what we do? We put pretty heads on a bot. Not pretty heads. That sounds dim uh, diminishing. No, I, I, I mean, like 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 people that people want to look at and listen yeah. to talk. And as writers, because there's a reason why no one tunes into a fucking script. Uh, and it's just, uh, how do you feel about actors <laughs> as a race? <laughs> uh, I have had uh, s films where I'm not directing them. They just kind of go away if you can't figure out how to communicate to the actor, if the actor right. is just going to take it. And on Patriot, we just don't have that. We have uh, the getting through the day is the only ordeal on Patriot, just shooting a lot of pages. The actors are glad, I think, to come to work and to be complicated. And we have good looking people in the show. Uh, I don't, I guess I don't look at it like that, they've all become really important to me. Uh, and they're all so, like Mike Dorman, he's a good looking guy. Oh my God. But that's not what he, but that's not what he pushes on the show. No, he's it so just, much more. But yeah, he's more, oh. he's more. I, no, I seriously, it's, it's really notable the size of man crush I get. I think it's, a, it's more about, it's, it's his sweater, his like, <laughs> it, it, he's just so cute. Yeah. Like, like, like. <laughs> And so sad, but the show points. Do you want to? Do you want to fix him? I want to fix. Uh, I that, want that. to fix him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's so sad, and all the all the all the female characters in the show, from little six-year-old girls to his own mother, they're victims yeah. of his sadness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And his own wife is like. Yeah, no, he's really sweet. Like when he's high, actually, he doesn't get violent. Like, like, and he he he's characterized as sad, and like all these beautiful shots you do, just showing him walking from one job to the next, because now he's going to deal with this, and he just and, and, he, and he's performing. He's got his Percocet jaw. Yeah. Like, to, is that? I didn't. I just found out tonight because I bothered to Wikipedia him. He's Australian. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh uh, God! I, I just I, I can't believe these fucking like Kiwis and Aust Aussies that are like like they, they they're actors like they they're playing Americans and they're fucking like like oh, God damn these people. <laughs> we should actually like we should we should start closing our borders. Well, <laughs> it just occurred to me. They're all, <laughs> they're all different, but if I had to make a generalization, which is not a good idea ever, but they they don't acting is not a way to become a celebrity there it's a way to be an artist so they're not any different than our camera operator they don't <laughs> act any different than our, the rest of our crew he is a humble um and tremendously hard-working artist i.e abusable um we i mean I he, no, i'm, yeah, I'm well, being glib but i, he, I no he we we put mike in the, he swam the english channel <laughs> yes, for, the, he did. For, the t, for a tv show and uh, he, but he also, yeah, the character climbs over. A, can I ask you that one question? What's with the electric fence thing? Like, what did you, like, what, you, you can climb over an electric fence if you can just withstand the pain? Well, <laughs> he's, it's a beautiful scene when he explains to the little girl. He's like, she's like, what are you going to do tonight? And yeah, like, well, you can because there are liabilities with electric fences. The, here's the, the, uh, they're not allowed the max. To, they're not allowed to be lethal. They, exactly. They, they, they have to be less voltage than would knock a toddler unconscious. Also, if you spread in out, in case right? a toddler wandered into one, that's good to know. Isn't it also? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's about willpower. Yeah, it's yeah. like this random. It's this just combination of if it was just like a sort of like visceral, like here's how you do this, kind of like that high we get from the Jason Bourne thing, where it's like 
like I know how to pick a lock and I could say you you do this weird childish thing that like I don't know where he goes like uh, I have to jump 40 feet onto a balcony and then the the person he's talking to goes make sure you land on your butt and he goes that's not that's a that's a absolute uh, mistake no that's a lot of, everyone thinks that if you landed on your butt in a 40 foot fall you you could and he names all the medical things that could happen to you that would basically incapacitate you and he's like the best thing you can do is submit to the fact that you're going to be unconscious for 17 minutes by going sideways and knocking your head because you're you're, you're landing on your side and then and then hitting your accepting that your head's going to get hit and yeah. so he just like <laughs> He's like, I'm going to jump 40 well, that's, feet. But that's in that book. Here's the way it's expressed. The safest thing to do is to land on the organ that is protected by an encasement of bone, which is your head. Right. You land on your shoulder. But I mean, we made the book up. Dick. Not directly on your head, but, <laughs> no. but, to, like, but that's the thing. Like, he doesn't, that, that is a, like, you can't, if you land on your head, you'll break your neck. Like, right. he doesn't, like, but, but, but it's like, Better your head, uh, what I, I know, but, but like it's like it's little shit like that, like where he that also it interests the mystical realm because his plan or lack of is that he's going to go into the building and he's going to jump and he knows that he's going to be unconscious for 17 minutes, which he is. He's just a guy laying on a balcony yeah. unconscious and then he wakes up and then he walks into a building that he doesn't have to now clip wires and things because <laughs> right, so. he just laid there in a balcony for 17 <laughs> so, minutes, yeah. Unconscious, and he gets up and, and goes to the thing. He snatches the file he needs. Like it's, it's, yeah. It's if you were if you were asking the viewer to believe every single thing, oh, no, like I'm Tom not. Clancy, you 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 wouldn't get away with that. Not, yeah, but never. you're also that, saying this person is alone. They're sad and all this stuff, and it's like it, the, the the the. Okay, here's here's the thing. I want to talk talk about the. It's the, it's that friendship with Rob Saperstein. Is that his name? Yes. Yeah. So all right, so that's got to be the heart of you, like 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 what? Who is that guy? Rob, well, for, for you, like what is that? That's the friendship for you. That's like crazy. Do, I, yeah, I, I have one of those. Jim Becker is a is a is that friend of mine who's a musician. Who Rob is? When I write Rob, I think of Jim. Because uh, this guy has a friend. He'd rather be a musician, and he has this friend who looks like Jerry Garcia. And he's just like this chill dude. But in season one, we th we were pretty sure he hung himself. Right. Oh God! Now I'm spoiling. Like, like, yeah, like go watch no. the show. Like, like maybe he did hung himself. <laughs> yeah. uh, wh Sorry. Who, who he? What he means to John is a, a life whose only complication is: Do you prefer the Willie Nelson version of uh, mm -hmm. Poncho and Lefty to Towns Van Zant? That's where John wants to be. He wants to be in a bar having that debate. And that's, yeah, that's, that's who, what I that's want who too. He really is. Is that what you want? Do you want to just hang out and drink and with you? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a real joy. I <laughs> know, but 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 if you, but it's why you, I came do you, here. Do you do you do you write and and make stuff as a as a how, to to what degree is it like? Well, it's, I'm a, it's, I, I suck at washing dishes and I just want to keep people from killing me. Like like and what and to what extent is it like we got to do it because it's so important? Like I I feel like Are if I found writing? a Am I what? Writing, you mean? Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Well, like, let's say making stuff, because yeah. since you do all of the above. Like, do you, if you, if you, Man, if, if, if you were an heir to a Nike fortune, would you be doing what you do, or do you do it because you desperately didn't want to die of starvation, and now it's an addiction? <laughs> Excuse but, the pun. <laughs> my brother. Heir my, to a my, Nike fortune. <laughs> my brother plays uh, Dennis in the show. My brother's the guy. That was um, good. Wait, your brother is Dennis? Yeah. Are you shitting me? No. Oh my God, that's so but funny. That's, we've been doing that our whole lives, just making stuff up and filming it. And so I would be doing that, I guess, with Chris and with my friends on the show. But I, I prefer music and movies to writing anything else because it, you're not alone all the time. Writing is tremendously hard because of all the time you have to spend by yourself. And... It is the, it's, the only, it's the only aspect of that, of that huge collaboration of people, that whole thing, that only one person does alone. And it's really hard for me, and I don't like it an awful lot. And as time goes by, I like it less and less. Writing by yourself? Yeah. 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 Just writing, period. It just, hey, fuck it. Yeah. I mean, I mean you, so you, bad. you know. No, it's fucking, like, it is, it feels like... Uh, yeah, I don't even know. I want to say cutting, but that's like too glamorous. No, right. 
It's like not cutting. It's homework. like because uh, cutting Potential is like homework. productive and interesting. Not to, if you kids and you're cutting, don't. I don't want to glamorize cutting. I'm saying writing is shitty here. It's like not as cool. It's like garbage. <laughs> it's like. It's like yeah. rubbing a fucking pencil in and out of your nasal cavity. So you're writing, right? <laughs> you're writing know, right like, now, trying to find the yeah, way exactly. To it's like it's like oh, there we go again. Another reason to feel pain because I tried to fucking figure out how to explain something. Yeah, geez, or that or Minecraft. Thank you. Like like fuck writing, fuck writing. Like yeah. I just, I just I, I, thank you for. I'm so glad you said that because yeah. you're truly. I mean, I I feel very confident. Like and going like I know a good writer when I hear their writing. Like that, to me, to me, it's not like it's not about like. Well, thank you. Because to me, like movies and TV shows and narratives and stuff, I have this obsession about structure and stuff. Where I don't know where I'd begin and end. And that's kind of what I've been circling with. The, but then you get down to the root of the matter. Where like I, I am always like. Quentin Tarantino is so good at dialogue. Yeah. There's such a... I don't care if he falls in and out of fashion. I don't care what it's like interesting to say academically about the structure of his films or whatever. Like I know when someone is writing dialogue, when they have like this gift, like you are... You you have so much like pouring out of you. I think that's what it is that I'm, when I'm watching the show. It's just like I'm never more than ten seconds away from no matter what corner you've been boxed into. <laughs> Like someone's gonna say something that I'm like, huh? That's a weird way of saying that. Like this guy really was on a deadline or drunk or like I. I <laughs> well, I, like, those, both of those might have been true. They sort of go <laughs> hand in hand, but. I care as hard as writing is. I, I think it maybe is that hard because I care about it a lot. I, I, I think that it's the worst thing you can do. And it's the worst the job to have yeah. something. Oh, oh do, do you care about it? Like if you're gonna make rocking chairs, it's like first rule: care about it. Like if you go to McDonald's, you go care about McDonald's. You probably like excel at McDonald's. You go to writing McDonald's, and the and the and it's like, oh, uh, if you care, you're gonna fail. <laughs> writing McDonald's. Don't, don't care. <laughs> Gonna, I picture gonna, the uniforms, and it sounds like fun. I think we should open a writing McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, well, you're writing right. McDonald's. If, we all are ours today. Not only will you fail, <laughs> you will pay a, per, a tremendous personal cost in your life too. You'll become a person who's impossible to live with. You'll have a terrible uh, reputation. I, you know, people will be like, well, I don't know what he's doing down there. He's in the office. He locked himself in. He apparently thinks he's writing the Citizen Kane of, of episodes about a fucking pickle or whatever. Like He thinks he's <laughs> fucking hot shit. Like, I, 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 I riffed that example as if to like buy it back and go, like, oh, that was worth it, Dan. But it's like, no, it probably wasn't that. It was like, I, 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 I wrote that one in my sleep with like, like I, over the weekend with Jeff. So like, like, yeah, it's just like, it's just like, like like the shit I've, I've spent this today I spent today like highlighting and deleting so much shit that I spent so much time writing for fucking like oh Rick's gonna really be funny when he says this and then I'm just like noticing is highlight delete because I finally have the luxury of going like oh I, no one's fighting me I'm in no fight so now I can objectively go yeah that, that's crap and then I'm like, no, I'm like, you spent three hours on that line yeah. of dialogue for no reason. I, sorry, man. I, I hate writing is, I, is our point. Yeah. It's, it's just such a garbage job. I, it, 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 it's such a fake job. It's a fake job. Well, but, it, I went too far. I went too far. <laughs> you're saying, you're saying the, the, the guild might uh, withhold our payments. No, but I mean, obviously it's fake. It's, it's fiction. It, it's a lie. But it's more than it's more than just because you're. Just, I'm saying you're lying about it being. It's, it's like our. We're, we only. You either write something good because you fucking like had to. You can't like. I hate it that we like go like. Oh, I'm gonna make this good, and then it's like six hours later, and it's like you made it bad. <laughs> <laughs> Have oh. you ever made anything good because you spent more time on it? Uh, no. I, it all accidentally or with a, an impossible to recognize source just comes to you and you can never call it. All you can do is fend off the people who want their scripts until that happens. The, the, the talent you must have is being able to make people wait until <laughs> that thing finally accidentally comes together. Music's not like that though. Music has an entirely different way of coming together that is more peaceful 
than that. Like the, the writing fiction is the hardest thing I've encountered among all the different things I do on Patriot. That is the the miserable job. Yeah, chief among it, like figuring out like what someone's supposed to do next, what's supposed to happen next, the plot shit, like you said. Uh, uh, but the, yeah, I just like I'm like oh, put two people in a room. Let me have this father say to this son, "I need you to do this," and then boy, this son's gonna let him have it. But like I'm different from you because the whole time the son is letting the father have it, I would have one eye on the audience, and I'd be going like, right, like come on, man, no one likes a bully, and you're like, you're deeper than that to me because you're going like, I don't care, like I'm like, here's what it feels like to love your father so much that it hurts everyone around you. That's grown up shit. Uh, so thank you for. Doing that, even though it's next to the spatulas, <laughs> it's under the spatulas. <laughs> cool. I, 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 I really hope the show gets a third season. Thank uh, you. Very just much, because. Dan. Well, I, actually, maybe I don't because I want you to do whatever you would do if it didn't. I mean, I, like you're, you're, you've, you've, you, you've, you've done. He's already put in. I, we heard him. He's put in work into the third season already. He hasn't done it yet. Look, I want to see this guy suffer. Oh. <laughs> it uh, works for we, uh, me. Uh, a little it, bit about Stephen. Where are you from? What uh, state? Chicago. You said, uh, yeah, the Midwest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what part? Shout that out, just in case they're listening, because we go to Chicago every once in a while. I live Boys in Lake, Town. Uh, Lakeview. Oh, oh Lakeview. Okay. Yeah. Boys Town. I don't know. Literally. No, there you Lakeview go. is right yeah, next to Boys Town. Ah. Yeah. So right off of Belmont a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we, we write the show there. No one who works on the show You write lives. it there? Your offices are there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the summer, please tell me not in the winter. <laughs> yeah. Right. You guys. It's, it's easy to write in the in the winter in Chicago. There's nothing else to do. But I think that helps <laughs> us. That nobody who works on the show has. They're not part of the thing here. Yeah. They're all just people I picked out from Chicago who have worked with me for ten years. And the only way they know to do anything is our way, which isn't a better way. It's great. Hey, you can tell them when you go back there. Dan Harmon said. They're doing it the right way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I really, I really, I, it's like, like, there's so much like, yeah, it's, it's Mom I, can, I can tell when you guys are laughing sometimes and then when I'm not big confused. I, I, I like that idea of like the, the Luxembourg cops, like their toxic masculinity, like going like, oh, these women. <laughs> Anyways, all right, sorry, I'm beating a dead horse. The, you, you guys are fucking nailing it. I hope you get a third season. Thank but you then so again, much, if Tim. you don't, you're going to make something <laughs> that's even darker and more awful. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that, that, that will benefit mankind. Um, uh, let's talk about Tim Allen's The Santa Claus. <laughs> so are you, have you seen the uh, first... Uh, thank you for your applause. I have. Have you seen the first one? I, not only did I see the first one, I was traumatized by it. <laughs> Considering being divorced, which is the heaviest decision somebody can make, watching a movie that I think pretty much said the only way your son will love you if you're a divorced dad is if you become this mythical bestower right. of gifts. I was so drawn into the first... Uh, my girlfriend and I started watching with Santa Claus 1, and I, I was like, holy shit, when it didn't fade in on... Uh, uh, sleigh bells ring, and there's like, uh, like French fry wrappers, and I was like... like He's like, oh, I hate Christmas. You know what I mean? Or, yeah. or like a yuppie who's like, fuck Christmas, I gotta work. It was neither. Tim Allen was like, totally get it, the importance of Christmas. <laughs> like, love my family, wish my son would spend Christmas with me. I'm like, wait, this is the third act of most Christmas movies, and I know from the billboard that this guy's gonna become Santa Claus. <laughs> I got really way too excited, because I was like, this shit's gonna go deep. <laughs> Because the only available arc for this guy has to do with his divorce and his acceptance of his sons. That, that he's like, it's like that he's gonna like, that Santa Claus is gonna fall off the roof because I saw the trailer, so I know what happens that he gets the suit. And then I was, that he was gonna be like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm gonna prove my, my son's stepfather like, is such a fucking piece of shit. And, then, and, then, and then, then the reindeer or the elves would be like, can we, dude, Christmas can't be weaponized. Can we just zoom out for a second? Why, why did you watch the three of them? Like what? Well, I haven't watched all three oh. of them. I, I, got, I, got, I got halfway through the second one, just blew my fucking mind. 
Or no, no, I got through. I got was through the, the whole. I got through the whole second one because I saw the ending, which blew my. That was Mrs. Claus. Mind the, but the uh, the answer is because Cody's like she's like, what's a good Christmas movie? She's Jewish, and I'm like, I'm like. There's no good Christmas movies. I, I like what? like Christmas is dumb. What about I, 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 Elf? Christmas isn't dumb, but like the idea that like move most movies suck. So then you add, <laughs> oh, what, like a like good Christmas. It's, you know, it's a, it's like saying like, I don't know. It's just You're dumb. Right. Like, There's Christmas Story. But I always I always like it when we watch it. Like Christmas Story is. Yeah, I would seen it. Right. How many I, times can you watch it? Right. It's a, so a, I was glad I watched Santa Claus. Like, but it turned into a kind of a random like showcase of uh, a stand-up comics. Like, he's like, oh, he's a good guy. He's very sexy. He's very practical. Uh, you talking about Tim Allen? Yeah. I, no, I'm saying that, that's what the movie is saying. Oh, I'm saying, oh, oh it's not what you're I, saying. I mistook okay. it. I said this yeah. movie's going to go deep, and it didn't. I was right. I was mistaking the movie like being kind of irresponsibly uh, amorphous yeah. because the, I think it was so written by committee that I was like projecting. I was like, this shit's going to get fucking cr- nuanced because. <laughs> Because he needs to get over his judge, judgmentalism. Like, 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 basically, he's going to get in charge of who's naughty and who's nice, and he's going to need to accept that if you have that power, you need to be like Woodrow Wilson's like uh, administration. You need to like, anyways. But it, no, it, it, I want it, I want to watch you watch that. Movie. The, <laughs> Cody and I was we we just pause movies like and then and and then we're like the, the, the thing we both agreed on the entire time we were watching Santa Claus one is like we both kept saying I'm so excited there's two more of these, <laughs> which kind of explains or like that's why there's two more of them because yeah. we both kept also going like yeah this is starting to suck like it doesn't make any sense but at the very end of the Santa Claus one, which I think seems like a very low budget kind of thing where they didn't quite believe in it like I think Tim Allen was like. Eh, like you know, he's a tool timer or something, and they're like, eh, you know, we'll give you twenty million dollars and some morphing uh, bits, like then maybe the chimney can like morph a little bit. I uh, heard about this morphing thing, and we'll build three sets, and it's got. It was kind of like it was sort of like a sleeper hit. Like it felt like watching Lethal Weapon one, where it's like, oh, they didn't believe this was gonna yeah. do anything, and then the second one was like, fucking. Boom! Like, because the first one ends with like a couple of kids putting on jetpacks, like elves, and they're like, "We got, we're elves, and we got jetpacks." And then they, and then, and you're like, you can tell that like they want people watch the first one, and they're like, "I love the elves and the jetpacks." Second one's like ninety million dollars fades in CG fucking things as elves and jetpacks everywhere. The story is so fucking awful. It's like you know, it's like like twenty. So, so here's the mind blowing thing. Santa Claus 2, have you seen it? No. Isn't that's the isn't it's that like the Mrs. Opening. Claus? Yeah, it's the Mrs. Claus. So here's the fucking This, is this before will make Jack you Frost shit enters your the fray. In the beginning of the movie, it's like Tim Allen is already Santa Claus because obviously in the resolution of the first movie, he's like, "Well, I lo- now I love I'm going to live at the North Pole forever until I die." And uh, I'm going to be to Santa Claus. So it fades in on that. So he's just like, I'm Santa Claus. And I'm Tim Allen and I'm Santa Claus. And I love it. I love it. And everything's fine. And, uh, and then they're like, somebody tell him. And he's like, somebody tell me what? And they're like, you have to have a wife or you're going to turn back into Tim Allen. <laughs> and he's like, oh, no. And I'm like, What? What? That, that would have been relevant the first movie. Wouldn't the movie's it? gonna happen backwards unless you marry someone. Yeah. I'm already like, okay, like I know, like, like so marry someone. Like everyone, like, your character is divorced. He's already an expert in the fact that marriage means nothing. <laughs> Go find a woman and, ma- and explain Damn. to her. Pay her in toys. Like. like that's but not instead, a wife. there's like this unspoken thing where he's like, oh, I'll find a wife in 28 days. And I'm like, what do you mean? You could find a wife in 20 minutes. People do it every day. That's not, if, you, if you're talking about the actual just ceremony, no. But the, so it's like, no, I have, to, I have to fall in love with a woman that's worth my, my undying devotion in 28 days. So in order to accomplish that task, 
they split him in two with what? a toy machine. What? What? That turns. What? That turns. What? Continue. That turns. What? One Tim Allen into a plastic Hitler Santa Claus. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. And the other Tim Allen can slowly morph back into Tim Allen while he goes back what? to his hometown and finds a woman that he's entitled to that <laughs> luckily for him, he finds within two women of his two women montage, the, f ah. the first of whom is Molly Shannon, who is simply, he goes on one date in a dating montage. It's one date. Molly Shannon shows up. But how can it be a montage? if there's It's not a montage. I, that, that's me being like, I'm like, like yeah. They, they, like they, they, he, he as a character is playing it like he's got a whole dating montage. No, dude, you don't have a dating montage. You have Fuck it, you're sh by the grace of Christ. You have an ex-wife who hooked you up with Molly Shannon, who, by the way, is a pretty attractive fucking uh, like woman in it, uh, who, who the whole gimmick of her character is she's so into Christmas that it turns him off. <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! He's it's Santa. so fucking crazy. I'm like, like screaming at the TV. I'm like, first of all, she goes, what do you do? Of course he has to lie. Because he's Why? Santa Claus, and everyone knows if you're Santa Claus, the whole point is you have to lie. He goes, I work in toys. And he's like, oh, because he's like, he's like, Meh, I don't know if this woman I'm entitled to is like making the cut. What do you do? And she's like, well, I'm a fucking, like she rattles off some occupations that I guess are unsexy. But then she's like, she's like but what I really want to do is sing. And he's like, oh, oh, really? And she's like, yeah, do you know Shania Twain? I love her. And she starts singing a Shania Twain song, and everyone in the restaurant starts going like, ugh. And he, including fucking Tim Allen. <laughs> Fuck you! Yeah. Yeah. Marry her yeah. now! Yeah. Yeah. Stop pretending there's anything at stake. Marry this bitch. <laughs> You, you fucking brought... went to New York to fight or wherever the fuck this story takes place, the big city. Are you fucking kidding me? Do you know how lucky you are that your ex-wife hooked you up with a Christmas-loving bitch? And you go to dinner? You have the fucking gall? Oh, oh, I don't know if I caught into a fucking chick singing out loud. You're fucking Santa Claus! You live in a fucking secret bunker that... If in your wildest dreams, if you go down on her tonight and she likes it, you have to then tell her, please marry me. And if you say yes, come live with me forever at the top of the planet. Yeah, with elves and reindeer. With a bunch of fucking right. weird reverse progeria right. people and animatronic reindeer and just like spend your life hanging out while I do one thing one night a year and then suck my dick. <laughs> well, will you please, if you would please, if you would please, I would, I, I require it for my thing. And I was like, well, and your wife, well, even like Molly Shannon said yes to that and she's singing it and be like, fucking bank, let's do it. But he's like, he's like oh no, he's like, well, he falls into a relationship with this, like the principal of the school of his kid who like, like, like he, and, and then she, and he's like, oh, well, I think I love her. And he go through the whole movie, the whole movie they go through, so they have to go back to the North Pole. The movie is over in 10 minutes. And they go back to the North Pole with the woman who's like the unlikely love interest. And uh, <laughs> they defeat robot Nazi Santa Claus who has decided that all children are naughty so they should all get coal so he has an army of toy soldiers. Which a fucking amazing idea that should have been the whole point of the movie. But... <laughs> Like, like, but it's like, instead it's like, oh, he's crazy, he's a crazy Santa Claus. But no, he's not crazy. He's following the rules of being Santa. He should be like, what is naughtiness? Like, it, they, they, they're so close to a fucking profound thing <laughs> where it's like, what the fuck, man? Like, fucking, let's do this. Like, the whole world should be the North Pole. Like, that should have been the thing. But they, 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 they the whole, whole movie's about, like, uh, uh, pulling back from chances to uh, awake people. Uh, <laughs> he, 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 he comes back. Thank you, th thank you, Stephen Conrad, for your patience. Yeah. <laughs> he comes back to uh, the. I'm, 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 while it, I'm sitting here, I'm just repeating in my head. The whole movie is about what blowing chances to awaken people. Yeah. 
He has to find a woman. He has to oh, find yeah, a know, wife. But... And it's not it would be it would be a charming thing if they said you have to you have to find a wife and then he was like I have to find a wife and then like would go and like go like okay I have to find a wife and then his heart wouldn't be in it. I need a Mrs. Claus because the uh, having the institution of marriage be like a formality and then like the complication could be that he he fell in love, and that's yeah, like, like a reverse love. Cinderella. Yeah, sure, or like any any romantic story ever it was like arranged right. marriage versus right. the, where the heart wants to go. But instead, they're just like, oh, well, I got oh, geez, that's not a lot of time to find yeah. a wife oh, at I all. Lo- I love the way you're thinking about it. So they, so so the, so so the so the la- the last five minutes of the movie, they come back to the North Pole. Nazi Santa Claus is like almost. Oh my God, the ticking clock on this, you guys. Oh my God! <laughs> like if they don't catch this guy in time, he is going to gradually deliver coal to <laughs> one house at a time. <laughs> like it's like if in Doctor No, like James Bond's like, I gotta get this bomb. It's gonna, it's gonna like start telling people that the world is blowing up. I, I, like, like, what the? Who fuck it? Let him go. How about this? Like, let him go. Put, a, put get, build him a second sleigh. Let him go deliver <laughs> coal. That's not going to go over with anyone. Also, they didn't really follow the old uh, marriage then baby. <laughs> so, which they could have done for the second movie. They could have gotten a wife, and then there's a whole dilemma with a baby. The they baby clause. Oh, you're gonna, are you trying yeah. to bring Christ into Christmas? <laughs> because um, Santa's. Uh, Santa's baby uh-uh. is not Jesus Christ. <laughs> the, the, so the two- he, he fights Nazi robot Santa Claus in a conveniently circular arc above the North Pole because it doesn't go anywhere. The sleigh crashes back down where the where the sleigh left. So no stakes. <laughs> he was never going to go anywhere. All you had to do was get in the sleigh and inconvenience him. He was a robot Nazi Santa Claus. He was not going to succeed, if, even if he did. Like how amazing would that be? Hey, everyone got coal last night. Oh, so Santa's real? Fuck it. <laughs> nothing at stake nothing at stake it just kills a robot that he created so that he could fuck a woman um, crashes the sleigh and, and everyone's like yay yay you did it you beat Nazi Santa Claus he was a robot I can't believe you did it that's so great and Tim Allen's like he looks exactly like Tim Allen because the whole point of the movie is that his magic is reversing so now he looks like Tim Allen and he's like Oh, 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 let's go. Uh, we gotta go now. Let's go do what we do. Let's go deliver the presents. And the elf goes like the head elf goes like. And 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 Tim Allen goes oh 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 oh, and he looks at his <laughs> regular Tim Allen body, and he goes oh, and he turns to the female lead of the movie, fucking five minutes from the credits, and he goes like. <laughs> I forgot to tell you that you now have a choice. I'm going to put choice in really big peppermint air quotes. Uh, you have a choice between <laughs> legally binding yourself to filleting me for the rest of your life in an underground bunker outside of any national jurisdiction <laughs> and, or 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 hey you have you it's your choice uh i'll take you back home and uh christmas no more christmas forever and, forever. <laughs> and she's like i've made my decision <laughs> it's like the movie's just like yay we did it's incredible i'm not a feminist i look I hate women. I uh, I marvel at this movie. You hate women, but you want Santa to do the right thing, is what you're saying. Well, no, I'm no. I want screenwriters to <laughs> to be put on a leash. <laughs> like if they're writing for children, I don't. I like why? Look, here's the thing: kids don't care about marriage. That's the thing that they ran into in the movie. They're like, look, the guy was already divorced. We swallowed that horse pill in the first movie. It just meant that he was single, so he could do sex jokes. And he's like, oh, you're naughty. You're nice. Hey, your ass is nice. And she's like, in your dreams, sleigh boy. What? Wait. <laughs> the, the, anyways, but like, like, like he's, but, but the, the kids are like, and then somebody was like, let's make the second movie about finding a wife. Okay. No, don't. Right. It's a, it's a kids movie. Right. Don't make it about that because then the rest of the, they had to like, then they were like, oh, so the second movie is going to be about 
uh, him slowly turning from Santa Claus into Tim Allen while he tries to fuck a woman? Do you think maybe they're just setting up a really majestic third? <laughs> well, well, I happen to know, I know from the billboards that the third one right. is Martin Short as Jack Frost. Jack I'm hoping Frost. it's going to be like a, a fucking awesome like well, Star Trek thing out. where it's like the first no, two movies already, don't even no. matter. I'm, yeah, I will, gotta. Nova. <laughs> I will watch the third Santa Claus. No, I'm like, believe me, Cody's like, why aren't you home? Why aren't we watching the third Santa Claus? <laughs> Jack Frost. What I do mean, you think? That's a real person? Like, what is that? I, I mean, I, I'll tell you what it is. It's yeah. a fucking vitamin B shot into the arm of a dying franchise. <laughs> Wait, but if he's, if he's in a movie, how does that make him a real person? Well, it's just, I don't, it's like we're so, oh, yeah, Santa Claus, right? Get it? Like Santa Claus, Mrs. Claus, right? Like he has a wife. Get it? Jack Frost. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> What are you talking about? Well, I'm sure he's going to be Jack like, Frost. He's going to be like a straw dog for secular. The whole mo- I'm telling you that franchise. I'm not. I don't like. Like honestly, it's like. Oh my god, it's so skirting the, the war like, on Christmas. Pre, the pre-Trump like war on right. Christmas thing where it's you like, know. Yeah. It just felt like oh my god, this is what we did. We were like liberal screenwriters and like we just inflated this bubble. We're so surprised it popped because every villain in the franchise is like someone who inexplicably doesn't want Christmas decorations right. to go up and it's like it sounds like something you'd see on Facebook, but it's not because the the principle that he ends up fucking and imprisoning in his compound. <laughs> <laughs> and people she, she begins as a as a cuck snowflake principal oh my God. who, but here's her reason for being anti-Christmas. She doesn't think that school budgets should be spent on such frivolities Damn. when people should be focusing on academia. E- okay. That's not an actual yeah. issue, but it's like pushing <laughs> these buttons of like, yeah. like, well, come on, can't say Merry Christmas anymore. Like, yep. well, not because of some crazy person who thinks that th- it saves money. Yeah. Yeah, school budgets are expensive because the people want things. So they jam her, those buttons, thing. and then she ends up going like, "Yeah, no, it's fine. Like, I'll fucking, I'll fuck you forever. <laughs> like, I met you three days ago, <laughs> and and battle. during the time I knew you, you slowly morphed from Santa Claus to Tim <laughs> Allen and back." <laughs> He says something right at the end. He marries her on the spot. He gets in his sleigh, and and he and she's like, "See you later." And he's like, "Hey," he says something like, "Like get get ready," like like. Hell yeah. <laughs> he's like, "Get fucking ready," because I do the. I'm I'm gonna be out all. He's like a truck driver. He's like, "I'm gonna fucking make this haul," but when I come back, you better. <laughs> Like I'm gonna take I'm gonna take your mood as an insult. <laughs> you better you better spend this time the, putting uh, the putting the work in of like <laughs> like realizing how much you love me. It was like really Please was, let that really, be the title of the show. You turn your mood into an insult. <laughs> I think there should be an alternate ending where it's just like him in the back seat of the sled just kinda checked out looking out the window as he's like going home, you know? Here are some things that movie franchise never addresses, even though the whole thing invites you to ask questions about how Christmas works. Like, all this fun of like, what if there's no chimney? Oh, well, then it morphs. Like, they never, ever, there's nothing about like, how do we hit every house on the planet in six hours? Right. There's nothing, nothing. What is the morphing chimney part? In the first movie, it's so bad. Like, he's just like, I gotta go down the chimney. And then he like, he does this like, bad like pre Jim Carrey mask actually I wonder if it's like po- like I don't know what I their excuse is I think it's just like they didn't believe in the movie and like so it's just like it looks like just like a cutout of Tim Allen like morphing <laughs> like he's he's just being keyframed like in a yeah, Adobe after look- effect it's not like a real CG thing it's like it just looks like a 2D magazine cutout thing like last starfighter like he just goes down the chimney and then and then uh and then they make this big deal about how some houses don't have chimneys and here's how they handle it the houses that don't have chimneys well they have like little pipes and so he morphs to go down there and then they cut to like their version of a poor person's house, which just has a radiator. <laughs> and the radiator morphs into a magical Doctor Who fireplace. 
that apparently travels with Santa Claus. Because, you know, the whole point of the movie is to take every piece of the Santa legend and make it real. And so, like, like rich screenwriters are going, well, what do, what do poor people do to justify Santa coming in the house? I don't know. They must think their radiators turn into fireplaces. <laughs> no! Their parents tell them he doesn't come down the fire. He comes in the door like a human. <laughs> That's what my parents told me. They're like, no, he's a dude. He comes yeah. in the door. I was like, Jesus Christ. And like, it's fine. He's not going to kill you. He's going to give you presents. Yes. I w- okay, one more, one thing. Okay, no, oh God, it's so late. No, yeah. fuck you. Okay, we're going to, like, 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 like uh, 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 I, I don't know how to end, end shows. Do you, 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 do you know how to end shows? <laughs> I know I have to get on a plane in 20 minutes. Oh, God. Just kidding. No, I have to get in a car to the airport. Yeah, right. Car, right. Comes, uh, car comes at 11. All right. Well, uh, everybody thanks Stephen Conrad for uh, yes! em- emptying his soul and sharing his process. <laughs> and watch Patriot. Yeah. And watch everything he does. Uh, and may I, may I thank all of you? And then also, Dan, I wanted to thank you. And uh, I got 20 messages from the crew and the cast to thank you too for uh, sharing how you feel about the show with everybody else. It means a lot to everybody. Yeah, thank course, you. well, yeah, please extend our gratitude to them. I, I, hope, I hope you guys get a third season. Uh, thank you, Brandon. Uh, th- <laughs> I don't know how to end the show. I don't know. Here we go. Ready? Ready? Uh, end the show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's been Harmontown. Merry Christmas to all of you. We were so happy to have you this year. Thank you for 2018. Thank you to everyone who showed up to the Downtown Dynasty Theater the entire year. It was our first year here. We're so ecstatic to be in our new home. We love you, Jeff Davis. Shout out to Church. Spencer Crittenden, Steve Levy, Sarah Hill, Chris Bora, who am I forgetting? Zach McKeever. I've been Brandon Johnson. We will see you next year, motherfucker. Good night. Did you get any of that? It's a good show!